on today. Today we're going to uh, we're going to have help today. Um, it's probably been it's probably been a good year and a half or, or close to it since we had a class that focused primarily on help. And um, we got we got three people we got three people to uh, to come in and talk to us about help today. You know we focus a lot of time on on studying, studying, and studying. And if your if your body's not right, right. your mind is not right. All that studying is futile, right? So we got three different people today that's going to talk to us about three different, three different uh, aspects of health. Um, first, we're going to have Sister Shona. She's going to talk to us about massage therapy and the and the effects of massage therapy on the body, and 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 of course how it, <clears throat> excuse me, could could affect your health. And then um, after her, Brother Naboo is going to come up and talk about myoskeletal therapy, and. Um, you know, that's, that's for people who got a lot of different ailments, you know, along with the massage. And the good thing is, uh, Shona and Abu, you know, that, that's, that's a team of husband and wife who, who, who work together. So you get a massage and you get some myoskeletal therapy. And, and, you know, people who got certain ailments, you know, you, and I think, I think, well, the table is there, so I think Abu is probably uh, willing to do a demonstration on somebody who might have any, any type of ailment or something like that. So. You know, we can um, we can figure out who's gonna go on the table. Somebody gonna be a guinea pig today. <laughs> One of y'all. Wow. Huh? He said no. Wow. We might put Tyrone up there because he already complained. Wow. Wow. So, huh? <laughs> Why not do it? Listen, I, I, I told him from the gate, I said, look, I'll go on the table. He said, nah, man. He, but he told me no because I'm all, I'm always on, you know. But but the thing is the thing is what he wanted to do was he wanted to get one of y'all who never had myoskeletal therapy. You know, somebody who might have a certain type of helmet, so he can get you up here twisting and tugging and pulling and all of that, so you can actually see the effects of it. Um, just yesterday, I, I finally got my cousin to come up here. My cousin lives in Waldorf, Maryland. And he finally came up to see me, boo. He got, he got a slip disc, he got a bulging disc, and sciatica. And, and after, after almost two hours, he was good. Um, on the boo's table? Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, I would, listen, I ain't gonna come here and tell you about something I don't know about. Hell yeah, I've been on that table. I need, I need to go back on that. And, and the, re the reason I've been on the booster, I've, I've actually been on the Shauna's hands and the Boo's hands, right? My wife sees Shauna every, I think, like every every 10 days or something like that, or every two weeks, or something like that, Sabrina goes to see Shauna. But the reason the reason I, would, I, I ended up seeing the Boo in the first place was, years ago, I sprained my neck. And, and you know, you, you just go on with life and you think, you think, you know, you heal. You think, all right, it's not a problem. Until so again, you know, I, I made some kind of motion and I couldn't, and no, no boy, y'all, for two weeks. I had, I was literally like this, just, you know, just moving around. And I, and I couldn't look left and I couldn't look right. Now, initially when it happened, I didn't know the book. So what I did was I ended up getting, um, I ended up getting acupuncture. And the acupuncture relieved the tension and the stress around my neck. But you know, once once I got to meet the bull, and I was letting him know I was going on because initially I didn't know about the myoskeletal therapy. Mm -hmm. And then you know he said, "All right, well, look, this is what I do." So I went to check the brother, man, and and it's it's a lot of stretching and pulling and tugging. Some of it's comfortable, mm -hmm. some of it's not. But I mean, that's that's the price you pay when your body ain't right. right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, surgery surgery ain't comfortable, but sometimes it's effective. And um, yeah, I went to see the brother, man, and and. I don't have, I, when I go see him, I don't have the issues. My problem is this. The reason that I, I still have to go back to him is not because it doesn't work. My problem is this, I'm a stomach sleeper. And you know, if you sleep on your stomach, your neck is either pulled all the way this way or all the way that way. And, and, and I'm not, and he, he stays on me. Listen, your, your muscles are too weak. And it's because of that. So I'm, I'm having trouble sleeping because now I'm trying to sleep on my side and it ain't comfortable. So I'm rolling to my, to my stomach and now my head is pulled that way and when I wake up, I'm walking like this, right. you know. Now, just just like three weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I called him and I was twisted, and, and he asked me to stand up, and he took a picture of me sideways. And you know, you, you were thinking I'm standing like this, and for y'all over there, you think I'm standing like this. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at the picture, my head was like this, my ears were over, over the front of my feet. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't stand straight up like this, you know what I'm saying? But by the time I left after that time, I was good. So, you know, we and then and then we got Brother Dave. Dave's going to come in. I think some of y'all familiar with Dave. 
uh, Dave is a protege of Dr. White, so he'll come in and he'll talk about herbs and diet and things like that. Um, we was hoping he was going to get here in time to, to possibly do consultations for anybody who, who might want to sit back there and talk with him about certain herbs or certain things that they got going on in their body. So we'll see if we can work that out. But, you know, we'll, um, we just got to get the show started, man. First, we're going to bring up um, Sister Shona L., certified massage therapist, and let her talk about um, massage and the effects of the body and whatever other, other kind of good information she want to bring. So, Sister Shona L. So. Islam, everyone. Um, there is 206 bones in the body and 640 to 850 muscles in the body, which is amazing. So we're walking around every day carrying these muscles and bones in our body and also the joints and the tendons. So it needs maintenance day by day, okay? Um, I just wanted to read something uh, from CM Bay that correlates with that. Remember, the human body and mind and earth contain all elements of nature. We are what we eat, drink, inhale, and exhale. Therefore, all energy generates from our stomach, mind, and earth. Okay, the stomach area relates to our solar plexus um, chakra. And the solar plexus chakra deals a lot with grounding, our self-confidence, and our success. So if we're having problems in that area, or if we're having problems even in, even in our lower back area, it affects that area. So we do have to watch what we're putting in our body. We do have to watch the amounts of stress that we're under because it affects the whole body mentally, physically, and spiritually. And not only do we have to watch what we eat and drink because a lot of these corporations out here such as the Acme's and different supermarkets, when they put the food out there, a lot of the food has a lot of contaminants in it and a lot of artificial ingredients that's really not the best for our health. So there's a lot of poisons and toxins that are going into our system. And one thing about massage therapy is, is that once you're on the table and once I start to move your muscles and joints, what massage does is it helps to flush the toxins out of your body. So a lot of my clients, when they're on the table and I have them prone, which is face down, a lot of them tell me, well, my nose, my sinuses are bothering me. Um, I feel stopped up. Um, there is some mucus forming in my throat. And I said, what's happening is, um, is not your um, sinuses that are bothering you. It's the toxins that's being flushed out of your body as I'm working on your muscles and joints and I'm sending the blood circulation up to the heart so everything can flow properly and everything can once be in balance again. Um, that uh, passage from CM Bay, I mean, when I first read it, I mean, it has such an impact on me because I am a, a body worker and also a mover. Um, I just thought that was very important and it had a lot of uh, correlation, which in terms of what I already do as a massage therapist and as a dancer. Um, the next thing that I wanna touch base on is homeostasis. Homeostasis is a noun. The tendency toward a relatively stable equilibrium between inter interdependent elements. So in other words, it's talking about the perfected man, a perfectly balanced immune system. And I know that um, everyone wants to 
reach that point. Um, and in order for us to get there, it comes down to uh, maintenance. And this is where um, massage therapy uh, comes in and myoskeletal and also watching our diets and watching what we're drinking and watching uh, the level of stress that we're under. Um, so homeostasis is just perfect balance. It's perfect balance of the immune system. Meditation also helps um, in this area, as well as massage therapy. Because once you're, you're on a table and we start to work on you, uh, massage has an effect on the nervous system, not only the circulatory system, but also the nervous system. So a lot of my clients say, well, you know, I'm about to go to sleep. That's the meditative effects that's happening on the body is actually calming the nervous system. And with um, continuous treatment, um, your body will start to balance itself out because our body also knows how to heal itself already internally. Everyone bear, bear with me. I am a dancer, so I'm usually, when I'm in front of crowds, I'm usually moving around and performing. I'm not speaking, so I just wanna let everyone know I'm not good at public speaking, but you know I'm mainly a hands-on healer and a performer, but I want to um, share this information with um, everyone because I enjoy what I do, and I enjoy um, helping people, helping people heal. Okay, um, the first thing that we're going to touch on is the history of massage therapy, which um, I thought was uh, very interesting. Um, massage therapy is a form of preventative a lot of uh, the people in Manchuria or the Chinese, they use uh, massage and Qigong as methods of uh, preventative medicine. Um, also, it dates back 100,000 years in ancient Hikupta and ancient Manchuria and in India. So massage therapy is very old. It's, um, it's ancient, and it originally comes from our people, our ancestors, the true Aboriginal indigenous people of not only here, but of the world internationally. So when people say Swedish massage and some other type of massage, it's not a Swedish massage, okay? And I'll probably touch on that later on. The first recorded text of this ancient healing practice in Hikupta is 2500 BCE. Okay, um, it's probably even uh, earlier than that. Okay, um, they were in forms of tomb paintings and hieroglyphs. And in ancient Manchuria, around 2700 BCE. The tomb paintings describe how Massage therapy was an everyday part of their medical tradition. So a lot of the ancient healers in um, Hakupta and um, Hindustan and also um, Manchuria, they were already using it as a way of preventative medicine and a healing practice um, for people uh, day by day. Okay, so where people didn't need to be um, cut um, with these different uh, tools and everything, which is what they use uh, nowadays, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Early recorded texts of massage therapy in India date back to 500 BCE. But the actual practice of massage didn't start in India till around 3000 BCE. The Hindus in Hindustan used the healing art of massage therapy as another form of a Vedic medicine. A Vedic medicine means life signs or life health. And this is where we also go into the seven chakras and chi energy that flows naturally um, throughout the body. Because chi energy is not only already within us, it's a energy that circulates around us. It's how we deal with each other, how we communicate with each other, how we treat each other, okay? In other words, it's like a universal energy. Um, and that's in um, Sanskrit, which is an um, ancient form of Indian text. Life science or life health, life health. And I find that to be very um, interesting. Um, so I just wanted to touch on the benefits of massage therapy also. Um, so we're gonna go into that. Um, the first thing I wanna talk about is a light to medium pressure um, massage, which is what they call um, Swedish massage um, nowadays, but it really isn't Swedish massage. Um, a light to medium pressure massage increases blood circulation to the muscles and joints while also helping to relieve stiffness aches and pains, and also arthritis, any type of um, joint issues, um, any type of arthritic sy symptoms in the body. Eases symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome, which usually happens in the hands and fingers. Um, massage therapy also lowers blood pressure. Blood pressure. Massage therapy also boosts the immune system function reducing headaches and helping to mitigate the symptoms of fibromyalgia. Um, fibromyalgia is like widespread pain throughout the body, especially in the shoulders and in the hips and in the joints, um, is where people uh, feel fatigue mostly all the time. Um, and I've had a couple of clients that have uh, fibromyalgia and from me just, you know, working on them, they say that they have more energy, um, they can control uh, their pain more, like the pain isn't as intense um, as before. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the benefits of deep tissue massage. Deep tissue massage which is like a harder uh, pressure from the light to medium massage. Um, it reduces chronic pain because I'm going further into um, the belly of the muscle. I'm going further into the belly of the muscle and I'm working on the fascia. And fascia is connective tissue that connects the muscles and the joints together. Deep tissue massage reduces chronic pain and increases the flow of blood circulation as well throughout the body while working deeper into the muscle fibers and fascia in the body. Fascia is, is the connective tissue that connects the muscles, the joints, and tendons in the body. Also, it decreases inflammation that causes pain by loosening up the deep tissue clusters or trigger points formed in the belly of the muscle. So, if you're living a sedentary lifestyle and if you're not moving around um, as much, also diet um, plays a part. So if you're living that type of lifestyle where you're not active, like in terms of just you know, walking down the street, 
is waking up every morning and probably just taking 15 minutes, you know, to go out, get a breath of fresh, fresh air, especially during the spring or summer, you know, and just get some exercise. Motion is lotion, okay? You got to move the fascia in the body. If you don't move it, it gets um, stagnant, okay? And then lots of times, inflammation sets in, inflammation happens. Okay, so, so I'm loosening up um, the tension in the muscle, and also it improves blood pressure while helping with the body's production of serotonin. So a lot of people, a lot of people that I've worked on saying that they're dealing with um, a lot of stress, um, their life is um, day to day, and they really don't have time to focus on themselves, and they need to um, de-stress. So massage therapy is very uh, beneficial um, in that area. Like I was saying in the beginning, it helps to calm the nervous system by also releasing um, serotonin in the brain. Okay. Also, as well, it rehabilitates injured muscles. So if you were just um, diagnosed with something from your doctor, or if you had a severe injury or something, and uh, your doctor uh, told you um, that you can use massage therapy um, to help rehabilitate for rehabilitation for your muscles, um, so you would, you would come to us, and we would work on that area for you. But after a few sessions, um, you'll start to see the benefits of it, okay? It'll keep the tension out of the muscle. It'll help with the blood circulation. So say if you have an injured hip, okay, and after surgery, um, your physician gives you a certain amount of time where you can't be active, okay? And then after that, he suggests that, you know, you go to phys physical therapy, or, you know, you need to start doing some um, exercise or strengthening exercises to help strengthen up the muscle, okay? And uh, this is where um, massage therapy comes in, and it'll def definitely help you out in that area. It'll definitely help with the healing process in terms of, like I said, getting the blood circulation uh, going in the body and bringing balance uh, to the area, but not only the area that's injured, but the whole body. Because your muscles are being moved, your joints are being moved, and we're sending that blood flow through the muscle. So a lot of people think that massage is just a pampering thing, um, but massage is actually very healing and very beneficial uh, to the body. Again, it's more like preventative medicine instead of um, going and having operations done, okay? Um, besides the deep tissue and the light to medium uh, pressure massage, um, we have aromatherapy massage, which gives, which gives the same benefits as Swedish and as uh, deep tissue massage. Um, it's a light to medium pressure massage, and it brings the additional uh, benefits along with the natural oils. Um, so the aromatherapy comes with the natural oils, and the natural oils that we have is chamomile and lavender. And chamomile and lavender are good for calming the mind, okay? Um, the decongesting oils are eucalyptus, pine, and tea tree oils. Um, a lot of people use eucalyptus to help you know, clear up the, their sinuses and the congestion that they're having um, in their lungs. The uplifting oils are yang yang, clary sage, 
rose, and neroli. The energizing oil, one energizing oil is rosemary. So aromatherapy not only gives you the same benefits as to light, as a light to medium pressure and deep tissue massage, but it also helps to de-stress, um, calm the mind, and any other um, ailments that you're dealing with over time. All the benefits of massage therapy correlates with the seven chakras within the body. The chakras are our energy centers, okay? It's our connection to the universe. It's also where chi flows throughout the body and it connects us with everything. Chakra in Sanskrit means wheel, okay? So we have these different energy centers flowing throughout our body, and they're, and they're circulating. So we have this 360 degrees circulation happening in our third eye up here, and also in our crown chakra. And one of the benefits of aromatherapy massage or any type of uh, massage such as deep tissue or medium pressure massage, your therapist may ask you to do some, breath some breathing in the beginning. So I may um, put some pressure on your temple area or I may put some pressure on your forehead in the beginning and I may ask you to do Inhale and exhale a few times just to help you to relax and be ready for your massage. But I'm also calming the nervous system so that way your body can heal. Yay. And I thought that was very interesting about chakra that um, the chakra in Sanskrit uh, means wheel. So you can also think of your chakras as rechargeable batteries, such as when you're in a massage therapy session, or if you're doing meditation, you can meditate on those different chakras in the body to help yourself to, to heal or to become balanced. Um, massage also assists with the lymphatic system. The, the lymphatic system filters toxins out of the body and defends the immune system. Okay, so you have uh, different uh, lymph nodes running throughout the body and it's a filtering system. Um, so this is where the body is able to heal itself. And so what massage therapy is doing is it's assisting in that process, okay? So whatever uh, problem area that you're having, um, if you're having problems with your rotator cuff muscle, which is uh, the shoulder area, or if you're having uh, problems with that ball and socket area, which is the hip area, okay? Um, with the blood flow and everything, that's happening as I'm working with you, the body can heal itself because of the lymphatic system. Okay, and uh, also I wanna touch on trigger points, okay? Um, a lot of my clients that I work on, um, and they tell me what their problems area is. A lot of times, a lot of my clients have uh, problems in the shoulders. They have problems in the low back area. So those are the common areas where um, they have problems. So usually, naturally, as I'm working on uh, their area, I usually find what people usually call um, lumps or, or knots. 
And I tell them, well, it's not, it's not a lump, it's not a knot, it's a trigger point. So what I do, um, I may find it in the shoulder area, it may be in the rhomboid or in the upper traps. So what I would do is I would apply light pressure on the area and I would ask them to breathe in and breathe out. And it depends on the accumulation of it. I mean, if this is an area that's been um, building for a long period of time, they're probably gonna need a few more sessions instead of just you know one, one session. But once you put uh, pressure on the area and you ask the client to inhale and exhale, okay, the trigger point is gonna start to dissolve. It's gonna start to go away just by breathing, because breathing gives, gives life. And same thing when you're meditating, you inhale and you exhale, and you focus on the injured area, or the area that's giving you problems, okay? The area will start to relax, okay? Because you're naturally bringing breath and circulation to the injured area, or the area that you're usually having problems with. And that's what massage therapy does also. Um, it combines with the meditative uh, breath. Um, I'm just going to go through the chakras a little bit. First we have the root chakra. The color is red. And it relates to earth, vitality, passion, and survival instincts. Then we have the sacral chakra. It's orange. Relates to water. Relates to the water element in the body, reproductive function, creativity, and compassion for others. Solar plexus chakra is yellow, associated with personal power and responsible for one's personal and professional success. Then we have the heart chakra, influences our relationships. The throat chakra, which is blue, to speak with our voice, speak your life's purpose. The third eye chakra, indigo, center of knowing, the third eye. The crown chakra, violet, our connection to the universe. The brain, the head region, the nervous system, the element of light, of life. Okay, um, so in order for massage therapy um, to have an effect on your healing and everything, um, it's good to come for maintenance, it's good to come more than one time, okay? You may need uh, more sessions, and the rue usually gives uh, a better assessment of that than myself. Um, I usually know also once I talk to you and I find out what your difficulties are and once I touch the area, I'll probably naturally know by touching the area, you know, how many sessions you, you would need. But if it's an area, like if you have a, a, a injured a hamstring and you haven't gone to get it um, checked out or if it hasn't been worked on or anything and it accumulates over time, you may need more than just one session, okay? Um, like I said before, um, massage therapy is not just a something like a relaxing um, benefit. It's not just that. Um, it's preventative me medicine and it's healing, okay? Um, where it saves lives where people don't, don't have to go to the doctor, don't have to get an operation, okay? And I just wanted to um, share that information with you about what we do. Um, we want to offer this to our community, our other uh, brothers and sisters at an affordable rate, because usually if you go to a regular spa, 
or a chiropractic clinic is usually for an hour massage is like $110, $130, okay? Me and the boo, we're only charging um, $50 for an hour session. And that would be a combination of me uh, warming, warming you up in the beginning, giving you a light to medium pressure or a deep tissue massage, working into uh, the problem area for 30 minutes. Then after I work on you, the boo would come in. Um, after I work with you, um, Nabu would come in after me and he would do um, his myoskeletal um, body work. Okay, um, does anyone have any questions for me? Yes. You mentioned the nose, the ball. Mm -hmm. Is that the uh, accumulation of uh, fluid or the uh, inflammation of the tissue? It's inflammation. Yeah. Naturopath doctor first, if you prefer to do it naturally, or get a diagnosis first of exactly what it is. And then once you have a diagnosis and you come to me in Nubu and you explain what's actually happening in, in the area, we'll know how to go to go about working on the foot area. Okay, so um, like I said, this is something that we want to offer to you that's affordable where you don't have to go um, anywhere else, okay? So we're just trying to take back what's originally ours and uh, offer it within our community. Um, I thank you so much um, for your time. My husband, Nabu, is gonna come up and talk about his specialty uh, myoskeletal uh, therapy. Yes, ma'am, before, before you go, I have a question. So you, hold the mic. Um, you talked about, you talked about um, blood circulation and things like that. Um, like people got sense of tight muscles and stuff like that. So if somebody, you know, people, people just walk around and they probably don't really know that they got certain ailments. So could those ailments with, with like a lack of circulation and things like that. Could that affect the way somebody acts? I mean, like like, like if they're trying, like if somebody's trying to study, because they're not retaining that information. Yeah, it could, it could affect. Uh, yeah, it, it could affect um, how, how you think. Well, how you return information. Yeah, and how you return information. So if there is an area in your body that's, that's tight and there's no uh, circulation uh, getting there and you, and you feel it and it's like causing you pain, okay, it accumulates, you know, a lot of stress and everything, you're, you're not thinking clearly. So, yes. Yes, I was about to mention that that is a chakra imbalance. Um, there's not a lot of chi that's being moved to the area, so it's like a chi restriction. Yeah. Any more questions for Sean? Yes. Yes, sister in the yellow. Okay, let me get the sister here. Right, no. No, it has to be a light uh, pressure massage. Because um, I know a lot of people with diabetes have problems with their legs and, and their feet, so they can't uh, handle a lot of pressure. But it'll help bring um, their body 
of imbalance, their physiological uh, body imbalance. Hmm. Okay, um, I think Brother Dave or Nebu would be uh, better in that area. I don't specialize in nutrition. Yeah. Um, do you have like a card or anything that you would recommend for people who are interested in nutrition? Yes, we do. So I'll be giving that information out after I'm done. I'm going to go around the room and pass out our cards. Nabu probably would be would be better to answer your question there about Bell's uh, palsy. So hold on to that question, and you can ask him about that. But um, I know that people with uh, handicaps usually massage is is good for them because it'll help um, rehabilitate or help you know certain parts of their bodies that they're having problems moving or if they have a mental disability, I know that massage would definitely like aid um, in that area to help everything work work better. Eucalyptus. Well, from research and everything and from what they're talking about in uh, the news and on the internet, um, it definitely has um, healing pro properties and is used as preventative uh, medicine in, uh, I heard in states such as uh, California. So, I mean, it is uh, beneficial, but I wouldn't use it as an oil or as a natural scent, like in, in aromatherapy or anything. Um, I'm not going to um, take it out of the picture because I know it has some um, healing benefits and everything. about it. I didn't know about them now opening up different centers yeah, like and everything. So I learned something new today. So thank you for sharing that information. Uh, you mentioned uh, about the chakra and uh, I don't think I hear the colors. You mentioned the colors of them? Right. I don't think I heard the color for the heart. Um, the color for the heart It deals a lot with how you deal with people, um, relationships, and things like that. Yeah. Say that again. Okay. All right. Sweet. Yes. Yes. But from what what I've uh, read 
on the heart chakra and what I've researched is that it influences our relationships in terms of how we relate and deal with, with each other. But I accept that information also. I appreciate that. Thank you. OK, well, this concludes uh, my presentation on massage therapy. And Nabu is going to come up now and talk about myoskeletal. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, anytime they, and when I say they, y'all know what I'm talking about. Anytime they start opening up dispensaries and telling you it's OK to do something, don't trust them. Public Enemy told you back in 1988, don't trust them. Right? So oh, hold on one second, bro. So, so you got to see, when you look at these dispensaries on TV, why is it that they have 30 different types of marijuana? It's one. It's one. Why they got 30 different types? That means that it's been chemically treated. That means that it's been altered. That means that it's not organic. And here you are inhaling it, and here you are taking it in and smoking it, and, and, and now you're becoming what you're smoking. Right. And what you little said, poison. poison. Okay. So if, you, if you're not getting organic marijuana, if you're not getting organic cannabis or whatever it is, that's, leave it alone. Yeah. Because, because, listen, when you start growing a third foot, don't say I ain't taking it. <laughs> <laughs> don't trust nothing that they're putting out. But the only reason they're doing it is, is so they can collect the taxes on it's, it's for finance. We know. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's commerce, but it's also to kill you off. Because you keep going in there, I mean, if, if you just keep taking small doses of something over and over and over, I mean, you know, it's fine, bro. Well, how, how, however you want to do it. I don't, I don't want to say, hey, get, get off track and start talking about marijuana. That's, that's not the purpose of the day, but, but what they're doing, don't trust. No. First fact it must be known that it was abandoned in the first place for the Dupont family. Uh, when they um, did the chemical analysis and started making nylon, mm -hmm. um, the, um, the kingship oligarchy, and this representative of the Congress, were paid off to ban it, and this is why they did all those uh, types of films. Number two, if you pay attention to just looking at the environment and notice anybody who's been smoking marijuana on a regular basis lately, they have a personality change. Yep. Wow. Yep. And they will, they will go to two to three different personalities. Mm -hmm. And um, it, of course you notice chemically treated. Right. And so they take it, now the other deal of it is, which, which you all know, that the uh, Asiatic nations are trying to restart the old Silk Road, which this is what's going on right now. And what's happening is that by agreement, the Asiatic and African nations are no longer transferring major industry products for UST bonds that they set up after the Civil War to, to lean against our birthright, which is how they've been operating. So all your big malls, all your big stores, all your big outlets are going to start closing up. So what they did, now you already know that the, the, um, the China War, the Vietnam War, were for the U.S. corporation families to take control of the drug, opium trade, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And even this issue with, with uh, Korea is about amphetamines. Mm -hmm. These are all known facts. Mm -hmm. So now they, they have no, what you call, flowing stream of income to support the, the Pope's army. Mm -hmm. And this is why, this is the major reason why that they're legalizing Marijuana, but keep in mind, Clearfield Doctrine, they're really not government, they're a body of imposters, yeah, right. but they're still exercising that legislative power. Mm -hmm. All right, now, so uh, um, to get another stream of income, also because the, um, the Russians are blocking the, the movement of the opium trade from Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. China is, 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 is interfering with their amphetamine, transports of North Korea. That's what all this other BS is about. That's the motive of them legalizing marijuana. Everybody should be very clear on that. But like you say, anybody that jumps on that stuff now is crazy because they're using it for executive order 11490 genocide policy. They got 30 different types because they got 30 different lace chemicals in them. Keep your eyes Keep your eyes Keep your eyes
we're going to um, we're going to bring a brother in the move. I I kind of I kind of gave a bit of a testimonial earlier, but um, the bull's going to talk to you about myoskeletal therapy, and um, you know, coupled with the massage that him has shown it does the effects that 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 has has on different ailments. Um, you're talking you're talking slip this herniated disc. You're talking sciatica, sprain, strains. Oh, any any kind of ailment you got going on, um, he can sit here and he can talk to you about the different different types of things that he can work on and, and certain things that he can't work on. So um, yeah, we'll bring Brother Nabu up and uh, let him talk to you about myoskeletal therapy. Brother Nabu up. Yeah. I, I do? Okay. Um, that's why I mentioned something about he came in with his head all the way down and stuff like that. It looked like an old man. Right? Let me, uh, I can't, I don't want to show you the pictures. I don't want to embarrass him. But I'll show you a representation of what he looks like. Looked like. If you can see this, he had, came in like a 42 pound head. Right there. 42 pound head. Why is it 42 pound head? Why is it 42 pound head? That's the question. 42 pound head, because the average head weighs about 12 to 10, 12, 15, yeah, okay. No, yeah, 15 pounds. But it has to be on an axis, like this line, my ankle, my knee, my hip. You should always think like your head over your hips. You know, your shoulders, your ears, and you look. Every time it moves one inch, it increases by 10 pounds. So if you have an average head of 12 pounds, as soon as it moves that one inch, you're going to uh, 22 pounds. You know, exactly. If it goes another two inches, two inches off the axis, it's going to be at 32 and 42. And that's something that, that occurs with the physiological changes with uh, aging. So you see a lot of elderly people, they come like this. And even if you are working, if you work out, like if you're an athlete, you say, I'm gonna lay down on the floor and I'm gonna do my crunches, do my crunches. You perpetuating that movement, that, that framework, because your body only looks like this. And you ain't looking in the mirror like, yo, I got a six pack and all that stuff. But from the side view, it looks like you just, you know, you hunched over. So you wanna eliminate that because, and also, if people sit at a desk a long time, it contributes to that as well because you, you're tight, you're bent over, you're looking at that computer. Are you looking down and you're reading something? So what we do in combination uh, with Shauna, my wife, um, doing her massage, we try to break up that hypertonic. It's called hypertonic. And that's where the fascias get fascia, which she mentioned, and I'm gonna touch on that a little bit more. It gets short. The muscles in your spinal climastor, your neck muscles get shorter, and this part of the back of your neck gets weaker. So you don't have the strength to pull your head back. And that's what happened to Serenwa in his case. He was in that position, and he's constantly do that. But everyone, you gotta be aware that when you go to sleep, your body is constantly be trying to repair itself. It's, it's like, like super ants. If I, like millions of things are going on, that's why you can, uh, how should I say? You can, uh, you, you get stiff. When you wake up, you wanna know why I'm stiff. I went to bed, I bought this $2,000 mattress, it's all comfortable, and I feel like, you know, excuse my language. Uh, it's because the body is trying to repair itself, the trauma that it put it through. And if you don't move, she mentioned that motion is lotion for the body. If you don't move your body, you want to be sanitary and sit and stuff like that and keep repeat, repeating the habituary movements, it's going to just get stuck there. You know, so you have to break that up. And that's what you're feeling. It's called the fascia. The one thing about the fascia, the fascia is like this. My, my beard, it's like hair, it's like a spider web. For sisters who cook and brothers who cook as well, if you ever done some chicken and you pull up the skin, you've seen that slimy, that, that silky film, and you can rub your finger through it, that's pretty much fascia. But after a while that you're doing it, uh, or, or actually when you don't you know, glide and move and stuff like that and be active and get that that development off of you and off of your bones and around your joints, you're not gonna be able to move. 
You know, it's going to be very restricted. And you can't, it can't contribute to some pain. So now you say, okay, I got the pain. Well, how do I, I'm not going to move it now because of the pain, because it hurts me. And that's, the, and that, that's, that's a repetitive type of situation. Um, the sister, you mentioned something about calcification on your foot and stuff like that. Well, the fascia runs all through the body. Another example of the fascia is sort of like a Spider-Man suit. You have a Spider-Man suit. If I had, I have this shirt on. If I snag this shirt, you notice that the thread is going to run across. If you have anything that's knit, or you know, well, the body is the same way. You can hurt yourself on your left knee, but if you're trying to prevent your left knee, it's going to affect the opposite side of your body, and that's where you get the asymmetrical asymmetries and you're not asymmetrical, and of course you're not gonna have what Shona already mentioned, homeostasis. That's the balance of everything, whether it be mental, spiritually, you know, physically, all that plays a very, very important part. Um, the brother, you mentioned something about Bell palsy. Bell palsy is the facing drop and stuff like that, and it's the weakness of a muscle, okay? So what muscle is dominant? Even though that could be a neurological, um, I have worked with people with ALS and Parkinson's. Well, you know, I go in a house like this, and these, these are Europeans, I'm, you, know, you know, affluent, and they pay me to come to their house. You can see me sometime right now, still carrying my massage table in Society Hill. Um, Lou Garrett, ALS, same issue. I have to go in their neck and open up their digastric muscles, and also I have to tap them, these type of people, because they have to get in contact with their movement, and if I say move your neck, and, and, and they start to move their neck, but I have to cue them, which brings me to where I was going to open up. I was kind of I, actually I have anything prepared to say. You know, I was just going to let it flow. Um, the law of vibration. So everybody's, you know, we we more scientists, right? We study, and everyone stopped studying to get this knowledge. So if you study the Hermetic principles, or some people say laws, you know about mind. So first you gotta understand how strong is your mind and what your thoughts are. But if you study that and study the science like we're supposed to do, you know that that thought is a vibration. You know what I'm saying? So everything is in motion. It's how you thought, how you think, if you wanna to go towards healing, that's what you, you know, that's what we try to gear for. Uh, that's what I strive for, to get in contact with you and I'm vibrating on your frequency to you understand like you came, oh, man, I want to get healed. I want to get out of this situation that I'm, you know, faced with. I use, I actually use, so I only use a massage, but generally I come in and follow up because I'm always speeding, you know. Uh, when I go in people's houses and they're paying me X amount of dollars in their house and we have to get out in an hour, I have to turn this thing on. This, is, this vibrates, this goes all the way down to the bone, to the marrow, and I touch back on the fascia, the fascia runs all through that. You're not gonna have anything, you're gonna have subsurface fascia, epidermis, you know, the, the first layer of the skin, it's gonna go down lower, lower, lower to the bone marrow, and you'll feel that as well, but you gotta understand, that's how the body is. It facilitates anything that you're doing, and your thought is gonna come here, because and combination, this is external, mm -hmm. okay? A lot of times when you learn something, when I used to train athletes, I always try to teach them, I tell them what to do, I show them what to do, and then I really stress the fact that motion is written in a language of feel. You know what I'm saying? You can, um, can like, when I train athletes, I take one of their eyes out. So if, you, if you're playing basketball, you're doing a layup, can you do it with one eye? Because you gotta feel it. Like Michael Jordan is a prime example. You can stand on the line and shoot with his eyes closed and hit the free throw. Why? Because he's, he can feel the release, he can feel how his arm up, and that, that comes with, you know, it's still motion, but he trained himself to that point to do that. You know what I mean? That's why uh, Seth Meyers' boy, Mayweather, he can not even look at you and box you. You know your boy? You, uh, why are you quiet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, now I stress, I focus on myoskeletal therapy, 
what that does, I work, my over is basically the muscle, what she was saying. Skeletal is the bone. It's a combination of the two. My whole thing is making your skeletal move. That's why I'm a thin guy. When I ran track, they would look at me and like, yo, man, why you don't have that mass? I did have mass, but I'm still thin because I don't focus on how much mass I have because the more you lift weights, it's going to make you tighter. Exactly. Right. So I'm focusing on can I, can I get that calcium? Can I get that thought to trigger the axiom in my joints to make it move? And if it doesn't move, it's because it's being impeded by the pumping, your tightness, and you're not really being flexible. You got to understand something. When you came here through this gate, born, you had to be flexible to get through the gate. You know, your head had to go a certain way. Your shoulder probably dislocated to come through. Right. Now, we have a little baby over there, a little child. Um, he's at the stage where he's trying to find his, he's trying to be mobile. But before he was mobile, he had to build up some type of strength to be stable. He had to get it stable. Like, came out of the womb, he had flexibility. That's why we can take the child, spin them around. They don't feel anything because they're totally, totally, totally flexible. And you have to get that back. Why? Because, again, the physiological changes that occur with aging is going to stiff you up. Some people can't even cut their toenails, can't wash their toe as they get older. They just can't do it. So going back to the child, if the child's crawling and is trying to sit up and trying to stand up, it, you know, it's trying to find this where it is in space and time. That's the flexibility. That's the mobility. But you got to, oh, sorry, that's the stability. It's trying to get stable. Even if when it stands up, it tries to grab on something to stay stable, then the child starts moving. Those are the, the, the patterns I try to teach people, whether you be an old, you're, you're not old, but an elderly person versus a lead athlete. When I talk to my lead athletes, I'm not going to name any names, but I work with football players, people who just got signed with the Vikings and money backs and all that, basketball players, uh, a, a long, a long, long, Jamil McLean, Flip Murray, Sean Singleton. I mean, I, I said I wasn't going to name any names, but um, those, you know, Philly brothers, Philly, you know, because we rep Philly. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Zed Rock. So um, the child has to get stable, and then it starts more being mobility. So you got flexibility, stability, mobility, then you got strength. But you got to always understand that strength is the underlying factor so of all of it. The baby wouldn't come here if it didn't pick the mom to come through. The strength of that thought. It wouldn't be able to be stable if it didn't have some type of strength in the core because it'd be going all over the place. Mobility. To be able to control your posture is still walk. But strength is the underlying factor. But when you're working out and you want to get stronger, like you know, I want to go to the gym, you're just talking about I want to increase my hypertrophy. You know, you're trying to get bigger or whatever, you know. Uh, women trying to get the, you know, guys trying to get the abs and the big chest, doing a lot of push-ups. I mean, you got that's another thing. Be careful, guys, if you're working out, you want to do too many push-ups. Because we have a tendency to want to go like this, push, push, push. But you got to always be mindful of the back muscles as well. You got to be balanced. Everything has to be balanced. You can't be just one dimensional. That's why I say you can't do all those push ups. How strong is your lower back? Can you do extensions and hyperextensions and stuff like that? So, uh, and next is power phase. Power phase is like for the pro athletes, the elite athletes that want to pound, want to explode, and want to jump like the LeBron James and whatnot. So those are the different stages that you put your body through. But again, rather you be an elderly person, you're still going to need flexibility because you got to move. You got to go up. You got to pick up something. You know, you're still going to be have to be stable because some more people they can't they can't find where they are because the again physiological changes that occur with aging they can't even move their neck. You know, they they step down off a curve they can't look down or their head is snatched that because it's so tight and again they don't have the muscles to pull it back up. Um, what else I gotta talk about is someone mentioned 
Uh, but yeah, the fascia runs again all through the body. Um, what, when you lie on the table, the reason why I put you on the table, and generally I, I put you on the table, I actually strap you down also with seat belts. Why? Because I don't have time to focus on any other movement but the movement that we're going to do. And that's where, that's where the energy and the, and the thought pattern comes in. If I want to go like this, this is what I want to do. There's no wavering, there's no shaking, and also I discount gravity. Laying on, lying on the table, you're not under the law of gravity. So if you even came in with a posture like this, well, when you're on the table, you're like this. So you're going to increase your range of motion automatically. I have uh, clients who have rotator cuff issue, uh, torn motor kick, and a frozen shoulder on the other side. She can't even do her hair. And society heals. But when I lay, lay her on the table, we work on getting that arm back as far as she can. Now when she stands up, she, she has a little bit of strength to do that, you know? It's very important. Again, I, I come from the athletic background. And um, athletic background. And um, I always teach the youth and the athletes um, lengthening before strengthening. Yet, Again, when you lift weights and all, do all that stuff, or repetitive stress injuries where you get from doing the job, you're just tightening up the, uh, the muscles and you're also creating bad motor patterns. When you lie on a table, I put you through a series of movements where you pretty much doing all types of movement on the table to get you to break all that fascia up. You know, that's the key. Um, to let you know a little bit about my background, in, in the non the gear, I, I'm not going to say it because you know those, those people are watching probably will be. <laughs> so, but um, I have a little bit of uh, history of myself in terms of certifications and all that from being a uh, certified through the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Um, of course, you know you got to have CPR. This is one of the National Academy of Morse, uh, Sports Medicine certifications. I'm going to block that, that nominee gear off. And another one, and, and another one, and uh, another one. And uh, this is Certified Rehabilitative Exercise Specialist. So even when you talk to your, uh, Dr. Rothman and Mrs. Rothman was my clients. But everybody run down to them and, and have surgery. They sent my, they gave her my daughter's book in college because we were that close. Uh, hired her after she finished school. But when I talked to Dr. Rothman, I said, look, I'm reading this book, this orthopedic assessment book. He was like, um, oh, you think you, you're learning too much because you know, I didn't, I didn't like go to those guys. Even when I was running track, I said I had a toe problem. They couldn't really figure it out. There's nothing shown on the MRI and that's what you gotta watch out for. MRI and x-rays, fascia, because it's like a spider web. If you ever walk down the street and you're like, man, what's this? That's a, that's a spider web. I didn't even see it. No, you ain't going to see it. You're not going to see it on the x-rays or the MRI because it's like crystal. But you only see it when it accumulates. And I had a chance when my daughter was coming out of uh, high school, we had a chance to go to uh, Philadelphia College Athletic Medicine a couple of times, PECOM. And we went into the, uh, it was like a room about this size where they keep the cadavers. And we sat there and we played with the, you know, pick the people up and play with their ligaments and stuff like that. And you can actually see the fascia accumulating. You can tell, oh, that guy, he, he was a smoker. Lungs, black, really. Uh, that, pro that guy had a knee problem. Why? Because you can see the accumulation of fascia. It's not, yeah, it's not uh, the ligaments. Yeah, because the ligaments connect the bone to the bone, and you may see the tendons, but you can distinguish that. But when you have that glump of solidified, I would say like lard at that point, it looks like the old fashioned lard butter, and uh, that's the fascia that accumulates, because it really, it really does happen. You gotta remember, Every, because you go to sleep, everything is still operating. And that's when it kicks off, more so. Um, some more things, uh, USA Coaching Certification. Uh, Ray K. Ray K is basically me asking you at this point, you give me permission to, to work on your body and to touch your body because I'm coming into your space and 
I gotta, you know, gotta be in agreement with your frequency and your vibration so we can look at this, get this from external. Your thought is already thinking because it's vibrating. And now I'm telling you, yo, move your leg. You say that, or move that shoulder, move that shoulder. You sitting in that vibration, say, I want to move. So that's three ways. And again, I touch back on the, how I train athletes. The video, show them on video. That's why I had to show set my, set my, this is how you look. So because you think it's pain that I got work, finished working with you, you got to stand up, man. You got to go through that threshold and, and, and forget that. But, you know, a lot of people, we get stuck on the trauma. We're like, I can't, I can't move. I can't move. He had an uncle who was on a, on a cane. Uh, what, what, what was that, a cane or a crutch? Cane. Came up, and to get to our place, you know, you got to climb up 20 steps. Came up, you know, hasn't been on the cane since. Mm -hmm. And that was like one, two, six, go. That, that's what it does. I mean, how I got hooked up with this, I was running track. I, I got in for my hamstring, and one of my teammates said, uh, yo, you need to go and see that guy. And I thought I knew everything. I, you know, I'm no muscular certified stretching guy, you know, a trainer and all that stuff, uh, speed agility, quickness, personal, personal trainer, another personal trainer, USA All-American, All-American. Uh, and this is a myoskeletal, freedom from pain, certified myoskeletal therapist, and a whole other cardio, a cardio respiratory certifications that you have to keep. But I got away from all that, you know, because I started more science, you know, that kind of like took me on a whole other different avenue, and I, you know, so that's that. But um, oh my God, what I was gonna say, it always happens. Uh, I'm open it up to questions because. I, I was going to demonstrate with some for someone, but I, we're going to change it around because Brother Dave need a lot of uh, uh, time. He needs some time. But um, to touch on De De uh, Brother Dave, uh, you know, I shared with him that you know the herbs is you know what he does is great, but when you again when you bottled up, it can't it can't do it can do its job, but it just it sits better, which you were suggesting. It helps. And all of it helps. It's not a one-all be all. Everything comes in, in, in moderation. You take things for what they're worth. And when I was a trainer, I used to say the same thing where people say, well, should I do yoga? Should I do uh, weight training? Should I do um, Thai bow? Should I do CrossFit? You know, uh, you really don't, you can get a good workout, but you don't have to go to hell to get it. You know what I'm saying? It's you know it's ways that you can you know uh, develop your muscles and develop your flexibility without pushing yourself through so much stress. Um, what we do is open up the pathways to your healing, and also if you're taking nerves or I ain't gonna say medication, but if you're eating right, the only way it's gonna get through the the area that it needs to do is you have to be free from any obstructions, any impediments, and stuff that's going to hamper your development and blood flow. Because, I mean, when I was in the, the uh, Christian stuff, you know, there's one part of that bibliotech that mentions if all life flesh is in the blood. Well, where, how, how does that work? You eat your food, it goes through the small intestines, yeah, your blood cells come from the bone marrow, and then it develops into the hair, the eyes, the nose, or wherever it's going to go, the skin. But how you facilitate that even further, and that's you got to be free. You have to have that homeostasis so nature can take its course. Because we, I got you, we have the innate ability to heal ourselves. We, have, you know, that's why we can scratch ourselves or hurt ourselves. And next thing you know, oh wow, I'm getting a scab on there. Like really, I didn't have to do anything, right? Because we already have that ability. Yeah, but Bob, it's on. Me? I'm going to talk to Brother Dave. You, you know what I'm saying? Because what I, what we do, see, you understand, when you have a, a massage therapist work on you, and you have what I do, it releases toxins. 
You know, first thing I recommend is like, you know, you drink, you gotta drink water. You know, you gotta drink a lot, a lot of water because you got, you just released the toxin. So you gotta flush all that out. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, well, exactly. But that, that goes back to the calcification. That bones, you know, um, you have to strip that out around the fascia because it's all like fascia. It's just different. If I twist this up, if anybody have lops, you twist it, it gets harder, right? You know, you break it apart, it's easier to deal with. Exactly. That's the same thing. So that tissue around there, we gotta relieve that tissue as much as possible so she can have the movement, she, she can relieve herself from the pain. In addition to whether you wanna take herbs, sister back there as well, if you wanna take the herbs or you go, you go to the doctor and you get in the scrape. You know, we, you know, we can go but so far, but you may have to uh, go do that. I, I don't recommend it because my, my philosophy is simply this. If, it, if it's not broke, we can fix it. If it's not broke, we can fix it. So that means that if you broke your arm, I, ain't, I can't fix no broken arm. You know what I'm saying? If you really tear your tendon, I can't, uh, can, you, can you move without a tendon? Perhaps it's gonna be limited, but I can't sew it back together. It's not gonna happen. If you tear your ligament and you, know, you twist your ankle coming off of a curve, well you, or your lateral ligament, I mean, I can help you get it back, but if it's severed, if it's severed, you, you have to bring it back together. Exactly. If you tear a muscle, you tore a muscle. You know, if your Achilles snap and it goes all the way up, you gotta bring it back down. You know what I'm saying? Quick. Get it back down, get it back sewn, and then start working on that rehab. You know, a lot of times when people, a lot of times when people um, go into surgery, I used to do, uh, like Mrs. Brockman, she had a surgery. I look at it like you got to do things for pre-op if you're going to go that route. Because I look at it at this point, it's already broke, so we might as well get you all relaxed here, open up your pecs a little bit, make your back stronger because you're going to be laid up for a minute. And so when they cut you and do what they want to do, it's easier. They don't have no obstructive muscle mass or nothing like that. The tissue is very fine. So, and what that does is promote healing even faster. For your pain and for athletes, I used to, and anyone, water is cool. We, we were spent nine months in water. All right, so water, so you know, help you recover three times faster, let alone making you stronger because it's 400 times it's just in the air. When I train, I train in a pool. Well, I'm doing my drills, all that stuff in a pool, but I got special suit, shoes that grips the pool, fins on it, so if I'm in nine feet, I'm running, but the fins are allowing me to circle through my legs. The buoyancy suit that I have, if I jump in nine, 10 feet, it keeps me afloat in my head right here. So I'm like a racehorse training in the pool, but I'm going against 400 pounds of, exactly, dents. Hence Muhammad Ali, why he can get down on the pool and start doing his thing. Why? Because they knew back then. We knew back then. You know, but we keep that stuff under. But I'm sharing that with y'all because it just helps you feel faster. Yes, brother. So what you're saying, some frequency and vibrations can go down to the bone now and uh, cure pain? Yeah, yeah. It break it up, break up the scar tissue. But a lot of times, to answer your question, if you tell me you got a knee pain, I'm, I look on the perimeter because you ever heard the old, old saying, the foot bone connected to the ankle, the ankle connected to the shin, shin to the knee, the knee to the thigh, and the thigh to the hip. Right. The same thing with the fascia, it's all connected. So if your knee pain is generally con uh, contribute to you have your foot, your arch broke, or you sleep a certain way, you hurt your hip or your lower back and it jacked your hip up. So now you got this hip that's a little bit higher than the other one, and your foot's trying to reach down to it to, to level you off, to, to have your gait correct. But if you're not flexible in that area so it can just naturally fall into gravity and, and hit properly, it's going to torque the knee. 
and that knee is just a hinge joint. Only it goes like this. It has about one to two degrees of, I can turn it a little bit, but it's not made to stretch. Exactly. Huh? You're going to have to stretch. Oh, yeah, you're going to have to stretch it in the other muscles. Come up. Come up. Oh, okay. Um, what was, what was I said, so you have to stretch your muscles in order to uh, work through that pain. Everything. I mean, yeah, exactly. What what I do is, um, if you had a knee pain, right? right. I would uh, lie on the table, warm that tissue up and stuff like that. I will work on your foot first. Why? Because again, they didn't say your head connected to your neck, your neck connected to your shoulder. They went from the ground up. And generally when you study the origins, the actions, and the assertions of the muscles, and then the nerves and stuff like that, it generally starts from the bottom up. That's so the that's why, huh? The exactly, the root, the root, the soul. You know what I'm saying? You came out the womb, they, they were like, shush, shush, we want the feet. <laughs> you know, and everything's kind of connected there when you study the science. So I would start working your foot, and then I work all the way up to your calves, parts of your cast, your gastrocnemius part, your soleus, if you even have an ankle. Um, so, so, like your heart is up here, but the soleus that's in your cast, calf is flat, like a fish, like sole. It's like Italian, uh, when you break it down, flat. So when I start working that muscle, what it does is that that's really your heart of your lower extremities. So anything that has to deal with your lower extremities, you gotta work that muscle so it draw the blood that knee to your foot. And this is how I work on a lot of ankles as well. Ball players just twist their ankles in practice. They call me. I'm, I may be training youth, you know, and speed training like, hey, you know, come and help us out. This, this young man uh, twists his ankle. You know, ice it, numb it down, and then we start taking range of motions. And also your quad. See, you got to look at, like, if this is the hinge joint, what's connected? What's on the polar opposite of? What's around it? You know what I mean? So we gotta address that. Your quad might be too tight, tight because now it's pulling on your patella tendon, which is cross over the knee. And all those, they, they cross over each other. Yes, sister. So um, I was in a car accident Again, I would go through uh, ankle protocols, soleus, to actually pump that inflammation out. Because now we're talking about lymph, lymphatic, trying to get the lymph nodes uh, inflammation out, the edema, in, a, in other words. So that, that you know, we got to work on that. So the soleus, the variations of the foot movement, back and forth, back and forth, that, that would help bring down that swollen and also strengthen it up as well. My whole leg, all the way up to my hip. Mm -hmm. it's like, it's like yeah, but yeah, that, that could be a back problem as, uh, as well because you got to remember when I said earlier, if you have an injury, it's going to throw your whole balance off. You're going to look like the Tower of Pisa, Leaning Tower of Pisa. Your whole skeleton is going to be off, and that's not the goal. The goal is actually be in line with everything. Mm -hmm. So we have to bring your body back into balance. That's basically all, you, all, we, all we're talking about. And physical therapy, they're good, but if you're under a, a guide, okay, if you're under a guideline of um, insurance, mm -hmm. they they they're gonna check that insurance paper out. And say, oh, this is the best we can do. You can get a boot, but remember the boot. And every time you cast something out, if it's not broke, you're making it weak. So I'm not an advocate of, of a boot or anything. If it if if you can move it and start moving it, yeah, start moving it and let's get it going. Let's get it moving. Because the boot, when you lock it up and you keep it in there, well you're not using the muscles. Now you try to you, you're talking about I gotta fight athlete because that's gonna come quick. If you were never an athlete, here's an example. If we took an athlete, a college athlete, prime, prime, laid him on his on the bed, 
hospital bed for two weeks, he come out, he ain't gonna be the same. Why? Because you ain't do nothing. You lost all that work he in two weeks, you, you lost a couple years on your athletic because you didn't do anything. That's the atrophy that sits in. So if you have elderly uh, people who just like, you know, I don't think I can do it, you gotta somehow get them to do it and move it. Do it in moderation, there's certain way, regress, regress, like turn it back. I mean, I have women, you, when I used to train a lot, women can't do push-ups. Well, we gotta look, have them, long story short, they wind up doing push-ups. You know, and not on her knees, on you know the regular way, you know, because you got to strengthen up the back so it won't dip so much, and you know they won't feel it in their shoulders. But uh, once you eliminate that 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 dip, like I I would take uh, if this is a woman, I would take straps and wrap it under her midsection to hold her pelvis up, so now she can just focus on this, you know, push-ups, opposed to laying on her back trying to do bench press. That's, that's not right. I mean, I look at, if you're doing bench pressing, you weren't good standing up and, and playing the game, if you're an athlete, playing the game where it's supposed to be played. Because you on your back, you got knocked out, or you out of the game. You, there ain't no sport you're gonna be pushing people off of you, you know, unless you're in a wrestler or stuff like that. But yes, this. Yeah, fascia. Well, basically, it's, it's a, a running, I would say example, it's like a super, it's the internet. If you think, like, if you look at the internet, everything's connected, like spider web. If you look at a spider web and how it's connected and how they did it, and it can, it, it's pretty much like a network of your body, you know? Uh, but it runs through everything. It runs through the bone. It runs through the tissue. It runs through your digestive system, it wraps around your digestive system. So sometimes when you have pain, hernias and stuff like that, we gotta, energy, energy it, it, it can be considered as an energy system because it's gonna transfer everything that you think to that movement, to that spot. And the nerves run through it. I mean, the fascia is really, really serious. I go back to that chicken example. You, look, you pull up that skin and you're like, what's that slimy thing and you're trying to, but that's that's the that's the flat fascia, you know. It, it's an energy system. It helps facilitate your urge that you're taking to get to the area that it's supposed to be doing and getting into your bloodstream. Yeah, it's serious, very 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 serious. And if I had a setup where I could show you a video of this doctor, which I think uh, my wife's touched on, is uh, the fuzz or anybody looked at it on. Um, Y'all can write this down if you have a pen. Uh, it's called the fuzz speech. And the only thing you gotta do is look at five minutes. It's a five minute video of this guy, F-U-Z-Z. -Z. And you'll get your course on gross anatomy. You will actually see uh, a cadaver. You know, uh, uh, basically, and he'll go through the fat. But that's his thing. I'm not. I'm not, don't want to, you know, that's his thing. He called it the fuzz speech. He's very elegant and very comical of how he explains it. But I knew what he was talking about, but that's hot because a lot of people don't, you know, know uh, fashion, you know. Any more questions? I got maybe one more question. Um, do I? Uh, I, no, I never thought about it. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I never thought about it. I mean, I, I, I look at it like I'm here for a purpose. You know, people want to learn. I mean, I can, you know, point you in the right direction, show you some things and stuff like that. Um, uh, I never really thought about it. No, I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say, I mean, I'm not in that science, but maybe Brother Dave can help you. 
and maybe he can help you more. But I'm like, uh, you know, you hear a lot of crazy stories about all that. You know, even that the prostate was a atrophy wound because I guess everything was came out first. Exactly, you know. So, I mean, that comes, that's a personal thing. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the same thing with a person with the women who I think have the hysterectomy. You know what I'm saying? They they know that maybe something ain't right, but they got to go and have their wound taken out. You know, I don't know. So I don't get it. You know? Any that's more questions? That, that was an act of genocide too. Okay. Yeah, I'm quite sure. But we have some uh, that actually. You know, without support, they fall victim to it. Right. And you know, we gotta kind of like I think meet them where they are and give them much of support and this and that, and and hopefully they can come into the light about themselves. You know, and still know that you know you still hold. You know what I mean? Because you've just been, I guess, flim flammed or tricked out of your, you know, the powers that be. Maybe you were that powerful that they wanted to, they needed you. And maybe I don't know what they do. Eat it. Uh, yeah. Drink the drink the blood and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So now you know what the now you know what we're dealing with, right? Because you're that powerful that they gotta steal your organs or whatever. It's uh, it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's it. How you feel? You all right? I know it was a little, a little anxiety. Yeah. Yeah. That myoskeletal therapy is a bit tough. Um, but you know, like like Nabu was talking about, what Shona was talking about. If your muscles and everything are just extremely tight, and um. You haven't been mobile, you haven't been working out, you got a sit down job like me, I'm in a truck all day. You know what I'm saying? So, so, and, and somehow, some way, I, I ended up, before I go on, I'm gonna have to ask all y'all, it's love, I'm gonna have to ask all y'all to quiet down. If y'all wanna talk, I need y'all to go out back because the camera's back on. So if y'all wanna talk, have any conversations, go on the back so everybody else who's sitting in here and the people who wanna see these videos can hear clearly. But, um, Somehow, somehow I developed a hernia. I couldn't tell you how. And um, it was actually Dave who diagnosed it too, who told me what the situation was. But I, I, ain't, I ain't been to none of them allopathic doctors and I ain't even considering no surgery. I get on the table for the hernia. I take the herbs that Dave prescribed me and I get on the table for the hernia. I ain't even thinking about it no night. That's real tough. But um, like I said, any of y'all who want to go in the back and see the boo go in the back. Um, up here we got Brother Dave. Dave. This is uh Dave's second time, you know, gracing us at the York House. Dave is a, a protege of Dr. Frank White. For any of y'all who, who knew Frank, Dr. Frank White, I didn't. Um, I've only heard about Dr. White. Um, Dave is a naturopath, um, top-notch top herbalist. Um, he, he, in his practice, he uses iridology, um, where he's going to have you sit in a chair. He's going to take a magnifying glass and a flashlight. And he's going to look into your eyes. He's going to tell you to look this way and look that way. And look over here and look over there. And he's going to tell you what's going on in your body, past and present, and what's possibly going to be coming up. And um, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can vouch for Dave the same way I vouch for, for Naboo and the same way I vouch for Shauna. Like I said, I wouldn't bring somebody in front of you who I couldn't vouch for. Um, Dave, Dave sat me down, and after we, after we went through all iridology, he said, okay, I want to test you for food allergies. And Dave just took my two fingers and would put my fingers on some words. And Dave said, don't eat this, and don't eat that, and don't eat this, and don't eat that. And I'm like, like, bro, you, you like cutting out half of, you know, like you in the way right now. Like he told me don't eat strawberries, right? Half the garbage. Yeah, no, no, not half the garbage. The thing was, he was telling me not to eat certain fruits and vegetables. Right. Yeah, right? Process. And now, now, what, what, what also ended up happening a month after I caught up with Dave is that's when I came into that eat right for your type yeah. book that a lot of people was discredited, right? Yeah. But everything that he told me not to eat was only a void list in that book. Yeah. I'm talking about these same fruits and vegetables that he told me to stay away from. Mm -hmm. So I got, so I, not that I didn't trust what Dave told me, now I just got it from a second source. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Wow. Regardless. Regardless, whether you eat it or whether you eat organic or not, Dave, I, I listen. I'm, I let Dave go in all of that, so you know I ain't taking no questions, nothing like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring Dave up and let Dave let Dave do what he does.
So here's Brother Jay. Thank you. First, I, I would like to start off by giving my respects to the Most High Allah. Um, I feel that, you know, I wouldn't be here if it was not for Allah. So I cannot start any lecture without giving respects to Allah. Also, I would like to pay my respects to my elders who paved the way. Um, we have to understand that somebody made a way for us. So always honor and respect your elders. Before I go into the lecture, I always like to ask for the elders' permission to speak. <laughs> Thank you. Because you always want to pay respect to your elders. Okay, they made the way for you. So that's something that has been lost among our people, this newer generation, not respecting the elders. We have to bring that teaching back to them because this new generation has, has lost respect. Yes. And so I always like to start off with that and I always like to pay respect to my teacher because I would not know the information that I know today if it was not for him. I came into this knowledge back in 2004. Uh, I had been diagnosed by an allopathic doctors having a liver disease. Um, when I came here before, I spoke on that. And he made a recommendation to me to get a liver biopsy done right down the street here at Einstein. And so I listened to what the most high was telling me, the energy, the frequency, what was telling me not to do this. And I told him that, you know, I don't think I'm, I'm going to have that liver biopsy done. So I came into the knowledge of Dr. Frank Wyatt. And at the time, uh, his waiting list was three months because so many people were coming to see him. But he set up a system that he called in the meantime, where he would have you see a student who would work with you until he was able to see you. So my first introduction to a science called kinesiology was with one of his students. And when they were checking me, because I'd never seen it before, it was, it was kind of strange to me, but in my spirit, I felt it was right. And what she was doing is she was testing my energy and she was testing the herbs to see what herbs worked for me and what herbs did not work for me. So when she found something that was not working with my energy, she moved it to the side. When she found something that worked for me, she, she kept it in another area. And I'm watching this take place the whole time, and I'm like, wow, like, this is really you know, unique. I've never seen anything like this before. So when she got together my regimen, she told me to take these herbs. She told me how many to take and when. And so I followed it because I believed it was right. Well, I'm thankful that I did take heed and follow it because I started immediately getting energy um, I, I felt really good. And anybody who knows that, if anybody who dealt with a, a liver disease, you, you're tired a lot, very tired. And so my energy came back, and you know, I'm exercising, and I'm feeling great. And I'm like, wow, this is this is this is really amazing. And so, in the in the three months I'm doing these herbs, I'm getting better and better. I can feel it. And so then I go to see Doctor. Frank Wyatt for the first time, I'm real excited. I mean, I've seen, I had seen him in his um, lectures that he would do, but never the personal one-on-one -on -one consultation. So then when I got to that time and he starts checking me, he's telling me stuff. I never even opened up my mouth and I'm like, how do you know that? Like, yeah, you're dead right. You're like, 
you're right on point. And I'm saying, wow, this is the kind of health practitioner we should be seeing. Because you go to these allopathic doctors and they need you to tell them what's going on. I have to draw blood. I got to do an x-ray. They don't know. But when you're in the presence of a master who can sit up there and tell you, well, this is why this is happening. This is why that is happening. You know, and starts talking about your diet and stuff you've been eating. And you're like, what? Like, how did you know? You know, so, you know, that's when I came into that knowledge, you know, I was so grateful that, you know, that Allah led me on the right path. And then I said, you know what? I can't hold this information to myself. I said, because I have been blessed, I have now have a duty to go out and to bless others. That is the blessing that I will get for, for taking heed. So I became a student. And so I trained under Dr. Frank Wright for seven years. And I tell you, it's an awesome experience. One I would never trade. Um, one of the greatest blessings I tell people all the time is the greatest blessing Allah ever gave to me is when he made me sick. Because when he made me sick, he taught me the truth about health. Had I been healthy, I wouldn't have seeked it out. So it was one of the greatest blessings that Allah ever gave me was making me sick. So sometimes some things that you think that you're going through, some trial, Sometimes you're going through that for a reason, and the blessing is down the line. So the knowledge of health was one of the greatest blessings that he could ever give. And so I'm so thankful for that. Now, I just wanted to go through a couple things as far as to show you, because some of you said that you've never seen Dr. Frank Wyatt before. So I just wanted to show you a couple slides. It's, it's not working? Okay. Well, if it's not working, okay. All right. We, we, while he's working on that, I'll just continue to talk. All right. So anyway, like I was saying, you know, I learned under him for seven years, and you know, when you learn that you don't need X-rays, you don't need to do blood tests to find out what's wrong. It's it's an awesome, awesome blessing to know how to figure things out without doing blood tests or x-rays. A lot of times what happens with us as a people is that we focus on names of diseases. Names of diseases are just the symptom, not the cause of the problem. And so when you focus on the name of the disease, it's like chasing a ghost. You get off track because you're so focused on the name. And words have power. So we let these allopathic doctors give us things, and we accept it without thinking. The greatest science that we have is common sense. Without using our common sense to figure out, you know, what's really going on with me, you know? Understanding kinesiology, for example, if I've if I seen someone that say, quote unquote, had what they call high blood pressure, okay? I can see five different people who have high blood pressure and find five different reasons why they have it. But when you go to an allopathic doctor, he's going to say, oh, you got high blood pressure here, take this medication. You take the medication, and then what's happening? A lot of times, it's not working like it should. They got to either increase the dose, the side effects, especially with men, you wind up being impotent. And it's like, it's, a, it's, just, it's just a downward spiral. 
but they haven't figured out why you got it. You know, and here you go in for years and years and you're on this blood pressure medication. But they're treating the symptom, but they're not dealing with the cause. And the cause, see, when you when you were dealing with somebody, when you're treating somebody holistically, the cause could just be because of the way they handle situations. Okay? When, when I'm talking about a person with high blood pressure, I'm checking to see, okay, how do they handle stress? They don't handle stress well, their blood pressure can go up, okay? Do they have a kidney infection? Okay? If the kidneys are not moving fluid like they're supposed to, the pressure builds up. So do we need to fix the kidney infection? Okay? Is it a thyroid problem? People don't understand that the thyroid can play a part in blood pressure. So is there an imbalance with metabolism? Okay? Is it a situation where you don't get enough sleep? If you don't get enough sleep, you can have high blood pressure problems. But you're not going to deal with that when you go to see an allopathic doctor. He's going to say, got high blood pressure, you're going to treat it. Could you have white coat syndrome? Anybody ever heard of white coat syndrome, by the way? OK. White coat syndrome is when you go in the doctor's office, he's about to take your pressure, you look at this white smock, this gentleman in this white smock, or this female in this white smock, and you're looking at them like they're God, and they're like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to take my pressure, I'm opening up, I'm opening up. And the fear drives up your pressure. They call it white coat syndrome. And it's true, because you're so afraid. Because we're not paying attention, okay? We're not paying attention. I can remember seeing an allopathic doctor, still in my training under Dr. Wyatt, and um, he took my pressure. He said, um, the pressure's a, a, little, a little high. And I'm saying to myself, hmm, I remember the problem with my pressure before. Why is that? And I started thinking about it, and I said, well, right before he took my pressure, he started talking about all this negative stuff going on in the world. That frequency made me upset, which threw my pressure out of balance. You see what I'm saying? And so what you have to understand is there's a touch point in kinesiology, touch points right here, where we call the, we call the pineal gland. The touch point is right here, the test for blood pressure. So the minute I walk, out of the office, I checked. And it was it tested fine. So I said, okay, all right, I see what that was. I said, he, he tried to stress me out before he took my pressure. And then of course it caused my pressure to go up. Or I'll give you another example. There was a, a time when um I had to get this x-ray done. This was this was years ago. I was working at a, a job in a slate from the from the windowsill fell on my shoulder. I wasn't hurt. But jobs are worried about workman's comp and all, oh no, no, you gotta go, you gotta go. So they took me to Roxborough Hospital, okay? And they took my pressure before they gave me the x-rays and my blood pressure was fine. They, they gave me the x-rays, they took my pressure again and my blood pressure was up. So then the doctor went into all this spill about, well, you know, you gotta stay away from Chinese food, don't eat you know, don't eat the Chinese food, watch your diet. And I'm, and I'm listening to him, and I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You just shot radiation through my body. That's why my pressure is up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, so we ain't paying attention. You know, and I'm like, okay, before you took my blood pressure, it was fine. It was not a problem at all. Now, you take my pressure again after x-rays, and it's up. It's radiation. Okay? Think about somebody who works on a computer all day. You don't think that that's radiation coming off of that computer? You don't think that that's not affecting you? Not affecting potassium and sodium and throwing your blood, your blood pressure out of balance? Absolutely. But we're not paying attention. So what I'm saying to you is this. Stop focusing on names and diseases. Focus on the cause. Okay? Focus on the cause. Diabetes. I got diabetes. Mm. Diabetes. Okay. 
Now, I've seen people who say, quote, unquote, they had diabetes, and well, I said, did you ever consider changing your diet? There's a, there's a comedy show. Um, Shaquille O'Neal has this all-star comedy jam. And there was a comedian on, on there, and he talked about his dog, right? And he talked about his dog had high blood pressure. But, he's, but, but listen, it was a joke, right? But there, it was some wisdom in the joke if he was paying attention. He said, he said, you know, he said, you know, high blood pressure and diabetes run through my family. He said, even my dog got it. He said, but you know, our dog, he eat the same food we eat. So he said, after eating the same food we eat, he said, dog couldn't have bark anymore. He used to have a strong bark, but now he like, Oof. He said he used to chase people, now he just laid and look at you. Mm. And I'm listening, I'm like, it's funny, right? And I'm sitting there, they said to myself, I say, wow. I said, the dog got the same diseases as everybody else in the family. Because why? He's eating the same food. So when you go to these allopathic doctors and they say, well, does diabetes run in your family? You got to think smart. Like, well, most of us say, yeah, it does run in our, in our family. Like, you know, yeah, everybody in my family's had it. But was everybody in your family eating the same food? OK? We got to think smarter. We got to think smarter. What else can throw your blood sugar off? Well, your blood sugar could be thrown off if you eat seedless fruit. OK? I've seen a man in Atlantic City. I did a um, lecture for city council in Atlantic City. And it's a 70-year-old man. And he, quote unquote, supposedly had diabetes. So I say to him, I say, listen, can I ask you a question? I said, do you eat this food? He's like, well, yeah. I said, I said, seedless grapes? He said, I just had some seedless grapes. I said, listen, so let me tell you something. So they're telling you you got diabetes. I'm telling you you got a manganese deficiency. Now, what happens when you're deficient in manganese? When you're deficient in manganese, it throws off your blood sugar levels. And eating seedless fruits blocks your body from being able to absorb that mineral. So, did he have diabetes? Or did he have manganese deficiency? Okay. So now, let's, let's also look at the fact that, OK, am I eating a lot of sweets? Am I binging on starches? Do I eat a lot of bread? Do I eat a lot of rice? We got to think smart. Because what happens with starch? Starch turns to sugar, OK? And if you're craving too much sugar, then what's usually happening is you're deficient in chromium. Now, chromium is a mineral that does what? It helps to strengthen the pancreas. So am I a diabetic? Or do I have a manganese deficiency? Or do I have a deficiency in chromium, which has made my pancreas weak, which is helping to have my blood sugar levels thrown off? Am I deficient in zinc? My cousin will tell you about that. He's like, cuz, I'm telling you, man, when you told me to take that zinc, and that target P14, man, my blood sugar levels just went right, up, right in place, man. I ain't had no problem since. Because was he diabetic or was he just deficient in certain vitamins and minerals? OK? All right. Just real quick, because I always I got to re pay respect to my teacher. So the, so the brother who taught me, Dr. Frank Wyatt, he was a naturopath and a grandmaster in Wing Chun. Came from the same lineage as Bruce Lee. So I wanted to show it to you because we like, and, and those who seen my last lecture, I talked about it, but guess what? Every lecture you'll see me in, I'm gonna talk about it because I gotta tell you about my teacher. I'm not gonna stand up here and talk about me. I got to talk about my teacher. So here you see Get Man. I'm pretty sure y'all familiar with Get Man, okay? Who was Bruce Lee's te teacher. And this is Moyat. Moyat is the Sifu who taught Dr. White, okay? From the same lineage as Bruce Lee. Go to the next slide, please. See, so there's Bruce Lee right there with Get Man. And there's Bruce Lee right there with Get Man. And also, when, when a student has reached a certain level, you know, he 
gets to stand behind his teacher. As you see, there's, there's uh, Moya right there, and there's Dr. Frank White, my, my teacher, okay? Man who dedicated his life to teaching us the proper way about health. So I gotta always honor and respect him, okay? Because he gave his life so that we may have. So I, I always in constant gratitude to him. Next slide. More pictures with Doc and Moyat. This was uh, Doc's first Kung Fu studio that he actually opened up in his own home. This here, this symbol here, I want you to see. This more, more flower, number one more flower. What that represented is that he was number one student. Grandmaster number one student to Moyat. And Moyat hand carved this for him. Moyat in China, his artwork is like Picasso. Picasso. So it's worth a lot of money and he's well respected because he was an artist. He hand carved this especially for Dr. Wyatt because Dr. Wyatt was his grand student. Next slide. This is just another um, picture here where he was presented the number one boy flower. This uh, Sifu right here, Sifu Pipajil, who was Dr. Wyatt's first Sifu, who taught Dr. Wyatt first, and then Dr. Wyatt became so advanced in the Wing Chun martial arts that he was brought to Moyat for more teaching. So I just wanted to show you that. Let's go to the next slide. Of course, this list, this uh, line here, excuse me, is like a, grand, a line of grandmasters. And of course, you see Dr. Wyatt there sitting with them. All right. And next slide. This was a um, banquet dedication uh, to Moyat's wife. Uh, every year they have this big ceremony for her birthday, and all the grandmasters of Wing Chun attended. This particular year was at the Ritz Carlton. So there's Doc and Sifu People, Pajil, and there's myself there. There's uh, Brother JR, another student, and Brother Terrence, who is another student. Now, this picture here of Dr. Wyatt was done by his student, um, JR. And in, that, in this photo, you see these cross fingers? This is the highest science of kinesiology. Okay? This is the science that I was taught by him. This is the highest science, okay? You'll see kinesiology being done. You can YouTube kinesiology. You'll see it. Arms out to the side. Arms crouched in. Okay? Someone laying on the table and they're pressing their hand down. There's different forms of kinesiology. But the highest science is the cross fingers. And you won't see that on YouTube. Many people come to me and say, yo, you know what? I don't, I don't see that way. A wing, you, you're not, you're not, you're not going to see that. Okay? It's the highest science. All right? So I just wanted to go over that real quick with you, and then I'm going back into, you know, what I was speaking on. But I just had to pay him respect. You know? I just I had to do it. Part of the reason why a lot of us suffer from different illnesses is because of how we handle situations. It's called cause and effect. The way we deal with things, okay? We need to learn to be more grateful as a people, more thankful, okay? Because a lot of times we, we walk around and, it, and it's so habit forming, we don't even realize we do it half the time. We complain a lot. We always complaining about this, we complaining about that, this is wrong, that's wrong. And we never take the time to be grateful for what we have, you know? We, we, and, and, and you wonder why you get sick. Because you forgot gratitude. You forgot thankfulness. You forgot humility. You forgot love. You forgot how to interact with each other. This is why we get sick. Because we blow things out of proportion. You know, the, just last night, right? Show you my queen. She made me some vegetarian spaghetti, right? So I'm eating it, and she says, Do you, "Can you taste what I put in it?" I'm like, "It's good. What you put in it?" She said, um, "Well, I put some cheese in it." I said, "Oh my god!" But 
it was it wasn't it wasn't um, dairy cheese. It was plant based cheese. But even sometimes plant based cheese can build up mucus. So I'm like, oh. But did I get mad? No, because guess what? The heart was right. She was trying to prepare a meal for me, so I am grateful and thankful for the meal. And even though she put cheese in it, so what? But if I had acted the wrong way and took the wrong attitude, be like, you know, I don't eat why you put that cheese in there? I don't know, now I'm gonna be sick. What did I just cause? I just caused the frequency to start spinning some negative energy, not only in myself, but also in her. Because I forgot to be thankful and grateful. So I'm like, thank you, because you took the time to prepare me a meal. We have to learn how to better interact with each other. We, we blow things out of proportion, we wonder why we said. And it's so true. You know what I'm saying? Things don't happen to you out of thin air. There's some things that cause that reaction to happen. And we have to take ownership for it as a people, or else we won't get better. A lot of times we give power to things that we shouldn't even be giving power to. One of the things we, get, we worry about what's going on with the government and Trump. Oh my God, what are we going to do? You know, we give them control. We got to take that control away. We going to do all we can't make it. We can't get ahead because the man is holding us back and we just can't get ahead. Do you know we really have the ability to change our condition just like the snap of your finger? And you know how you do it? Being more grateful, more thankful, deal with each other better, be truthful with each other, stop harming each other, stop lying on one another, stop sitting up there, you know, just spreading gossip. This is the stuff that holds us back. This is the stuff that keeps us from advancing. This is the stuff from keeping us from prosperity. This is what makes us sick. You don't understand the power of the tongue. You don't understand the power of water. Have any of you ever seen the video, The Secret Life of Water? Have anybody seen that uh, video? Well, what it talks about in The Secret Life of Water, this Japanese scientist, they, what, they, what they did in, in uh, Japan is they went to these springs in Japan and they would get the water from the springs and they would put drops of the spring water on petri dishes, put the petri dishes in a freezer and freeze them. Then they would take the frozen drop of water, put it under a slide. And then they would look at it through a microscope to see if the water crystallized, okay? What they notice is that with the mineral springs, they would see crystallization in the water. But when they used tap water and they put it in there, they didn't see no crystallization. They didn't see no growth. Also, what they did is they took Words, remember we're talking about words have power. So they put words on the water, one bottle of water that they got from the springs, they put the word love on. The other one, they put the word hate. So then they went through the same process, froze the drops, put them in, in the uh, freezer, put it under the microscope, looked at it, and the words that had love on it started to grow and crystallize. But the word that had hate on it was dense and dark and had no growth. Now, the words changed the composition of the water. But in scripture, doesn't it say in the beginning was the word? So words have power, am I right? Words have power. So, let's think about this. You're a scientist in here. You've been told well, your body's over 75% water. Some says 65%, some says 80%. The number really doesn't really make a difference to me because every number I've ever heard was always more water than mass, solid mass. So I'm like, okay, if you are more water than mass, right? And we know words have power, right? 
If someone is spewing negativity over you all day, or you walking around with a negative mindset all day, what is that doing to your health? It's stressing you out. It's breaking down your organs and glands. Your brain sits on a body of water, so if you're constantly thinking negative, you're destroying, you're destroying your system. Destroying cells, breaking down cells. Yes. So what are we learning here? We got to deal better with ourselves and with others. We got to learn how to treat people better. We got to learn how to communicate with each other better. We got to learn how to take all that negative hurt and hate and, and, and greed and envy. And we got to move it. Move that vibration and focus more on love. Focus more on energy, thankfulness, gratefulness. To get better. Because it's, remember, you're a total person. Okay? You can't just focus on the name of the disease. What's the cause? What's the cause of it? We ain't thinking like that. We ain't thinking like that, and we should. Cancer is known as a hate disease. What, you, what hate you ain't let go of? You know what I'm saying? And it could come from childhood. What you haven't let go of? That manifested this. It didn't just bounce out of nowhere. This is conditioning. So we got to think differently. We got to think differently because it is key. Your thinking, your mind, drinking good water, being in good spirits. This is how we get healthier. A healthy person is a happy person. A healthy person is a person who can laugh at themselves. A healthy person is a person who can take, who can take constructive criticism and not get mad about it. Because if it was spoken to you with love intended, then receive it properly and then act on it. Our elder Taj. Taj will take you in a, in a minute, have you read a dictionary and tell you, oh, you know you can't read? This is third grade. Now, if you got a, if you don't know how to receive stuff, if you got an ego, which I say ego stands for edging God out, is what I say ego is. But if you got an ego and you, you can't deal with somebody telling you you can't read, you miss the whole boat. Because what he's doing is he's telling you something out of love because he cares enough about you because he dedicated himself to study this information and he wants to help you. And he didn't charge you any money to tell you that. Some of us have paid thousands and thousands of dollars to go to these universities to get told the same thing. But they don't really want to help you. They just want your money. <laughs> yeah. So understand that you, we got to learn how to receive things better because it all key, it's all key to your health. You know, I heard a brother asked about his prostate earlier. And I want to tell you this. A lot of times when you go to these allopathic doctors and you get told that you got prostate cancer, you really don't have prostate cancer. But since you don't know any better, you fall for the okie doke. Oh, your PSAs are high. Um, it looks like you have prostate cancer. But well, do you know that your levels could be high if you had a bladder infection? Did you know that? If you could have a bladder infection and they could show your levels high on a, on a PSA? Or did you know that you could be deficient in zinc, which if you're deficient in zinc, your prostate swells and that can show up on the prostate exam, that, that, that you got your PSA levels are high and you just zinc deficient? Because as men, we got to learn to understand that anytime you ejaculate, you, you're shooting out your life force. So you're losing vitamins and minerals. And if you're not play, replacing it or you're not eating properly, you know, to replenish what you've lost, because remember, this, this semen, it creates life. So here, you wonder why your prostate is swollen and you ain't even paying attention that, okay, I, I, I've had sex, but I didn't do anything to replenish myself, so this is why my, my body's out of balance. I never put things nutritionally back into my system. So do you have prostate cancer? 
Or do you have a zinc deficiency? Do you have a bladder infection? You see what I'm saying? You gotta, we, we gotta be smarter. You know what I mean? A lot, a lot of us had old infections when we were younger, okay? Out there, young men, you know, being wild and crazy. And, and we take, go to the hospital and get some penicillin, or get some tetracycline, and uh, all right, symptoms going, I'm better. And what you don't understand is that chemical antibiotics don't get rid of anything. They only mask the condition you think is gone, but it's still there. And then as you get older, it manifests as there's something else. So now 40 years old, 50 years old, you get told you got prostate cancer, and it's an old infection that just never got corrected. How do you know? You got to learn your body. You got to learn your body. You got to learn the blueprint. You got to learn it, OK? Because we actually have the answers. Okay, the answers are all over you. You have vitamin and mineral points all over your body that give you a clue as to what's going on with you. And being that we're all electrical, it's, a, it's like energy points. If you're deficient in that particular vitamin or mineral, your body will test weak. If your, your, your body is um, you know, okay with that particular vitamin or mineral, it will test strong. And it's as simple as that. And you can find out what's going on. So when I'm checking people, I don't deal with diseases. I throw diseases out of the window. It's chasing ghosts. It's chasing ghosts. I'm like, I want to know what's going on for real. What's really going on? Can you um, move, move it to um, a blue point? I got a lot of information I can't. Today we won't go into all of it. But um, I just wanted to show you. Dave, let's go back, go back, go back, go back. Right, okay. This is a picture, yeah, can everybody see this? This is a picture of your blueprints when you're dealing with vitamins, all right? Deficiencies, okay? So, if I'm checking a person, say, got a deficiency in vitamin A, I'm putting two fingers over the right eye to test that energy point. If it tests weak, I know that person has some kind of immune challenge, okay? Uh, they could um, have, quote unquote, some kind of name disease that, 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 that you know, they want to name. Uh, it could be. HIV, it could be cancer related, it could be just um, allergies, you know what I mean? But it's, a, it's an area for immune deficiency. Liver could be out of balance because liver is high in vitamin A, okay? So if I'm, if I'm looking and I'm picking up an imbalance there, I'm going to start addressing things to correct that, okay? I'm not focusing on the name of the disease, I'm going to say, person is vitamin A deficient. I need to start working on replenishing vitamin A for this person. Vitamin F, okay? That test point for vitamin F is in the right side of, right above your clavicle in the hollow point area. What vitamin F is, and a lot of people who, who never heard of vitamin F, is your central fatty acids. It's basically what vitamin F is, okay? It's your central fatty acids. So a lot of times, person have problems or issues with inflammation, or you know they, you know they um be eating a lot of fried foods and stuff. That that test point will come up weak, okay? So we need to we need to fix that because you know vitamin F or or your essential fatty acids that's like your oil, that's like your lubrication. You know what I'm saying? That's like the uh, Tim Man from the Wizard of Oz oil can, oil can. I need some oil so I can move, okay? So if you're deficient in that, we need to fix that, okay? We need to fix that. We need to make sure that your body has more lubrication. You know, one of the, one of the best forms of essential fatty acids is um, flaxseed oil, okay? To help reduce inflammation. So I'm looking at it and I'm testing it and I'm like, okay. I'm testing a person in that area and I'm like, okay, you eat a lot of fried stuff? Oh, no, 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 no. I, ain't, I don't eat a lot of fried stuff. 
no, no, I, I, um, um, I do everything baked. I said, you eat a lot of potato chips? Oh yeah, I love potato chips. Mm, that's bad stuff. <laughs> All right, vitamin P. How many people heard of vitamin P? Okay, Vi vitamin P is your bioflavonoids. And that is on the left side, in the hollow point of your clavicle on your left side. Now, vitamin P, what does it do? Well, guess what? If a person has a problem with nosebleeds, they could have a deficiency in bioflavonoids. Fix that, nosebleed stops. How about someone who, say, uh, has an irregular cycle? Mm, vitamin P can help. Okay, because they could be deficient in vitamin P, so they have heavy bleeding or clouding sometimes. Okay, vitamin C. Okay, we know about vitamin C, right? Immune system. Okay, I wanted to know if a person was vitamin C deficient, I just touched in the hollow point of their shoulder on the left side to check to see if they're vitamin C deficient or if they have some kind of immune issues. Okay, <laughs> vitamin E. Vitamin E. On the right side, okay? They're deficient in vitamin E. I'm starting to think, okay, what's going on with circulation? They having issues with their skin. You know, what's going on with the vitamin E? You know, is there any issues going on with the heart? I'm checking, okay? B vitamins, okay? Test the B vitamins right at the navel. Now, a lot of you have heard of B12, we always, I always hear people, I've got to take my B12 shots to get some energy. But don't know about the rest of your vitamins, your B vitamins. How many people heard of vitamin B17? Vitamin B17, how many people heard of that? But listen what vitamin B17 does. Vitamin B17 helps suppress tumors. So if somebody got a quote unquote cancerous condition, where they got tumors going on, then um, they could be vitamin B17 deficient. I remember seeing a medical doctor in Elkins Park, he like, called me to come see him. He was dealing with liver cancer. And so I went to go see him, and I'm checking him, and I said, you know, you're vitamin B17 deficient. He said, vitamin B17? I never heard of vitamin B17. I said, listen, Laetrile. He said, wait a minute, I know about Laetrile. You can't get Laetrile here in the United States. You can only get Laetrile in Canada and, and, and Mexico. I said, that's because you're thinking about the drug Laetrile. I'm talking about the Laetrile of Allah. The Laetrile that comes in flaxseed. The Laetrile that comes in buckwheat. The Laetrile that comes in apricot pits. The Laetrile that comes in peaches. The Laetrile that comes in um, cherries. I'm talking about God's natural layer trill. That's what I'm talking about. He said, oh, I never thought about that. So now, how does God give you revelation? Okay. We got to talking, and I talked to him about my own issue with the liver disease. And he looked at me, and he said, you know, you did the right thing by not getting a uh, liver biopsy done. He said, because I got a liver biopsy done back in 2004. Same year. Same year I was supposed to get it done. And he said, and you know what? My liver still hurts. And you know what? I never got it done, and I don't have no liver pain, and I'm standing before you now, 54 years of age, and I don't have no problems with my liver. <laughs> liver feels good, okay? Herbs did that. Prayer did that. Changing my thinking did that. Not drugs. Okay? Now, let's talk about vitamin B5. A lot of us are B5 deficient. Why is that? Because we take on so much stress. Vitamin B5, pentothenic acid. If you're deficient in vitamin B5, guess what happens? You burn out your adrenal gland. How do you do that? Drinking a bunch of coffee. Who, who in here drinks a lot of coffee? <laughs> a 
Cut out that coffee, man. Cut the coffee takes B vitamins out of your body. B vitamins deal with your digestive system. You can have a lot of digestive problems just because you drink a lot of coffee and it pulls potassium out of your system, it pulls sodium out of your system. Stop drinking all this coffee. I had a client I seen, he was having heavy bleeding from the rectum. I said, and there's a test point, I can find out. You can say you don't drink it all you want, I can find out. But he, he, um, he said, I said to him, I said, I said, you bleed from your rectum. I said, I said, you drink coffee? He said, yeah. I said, how much coffee are you drinking? He said, oh, like nine cups. I'm like, oh my God, you gotta cut it out. You gotta cut it out. You can't be drinking all this coffee. It's very damaging. It's very damaging. It definitely robs your body of B, B vitamins. You can't deal with stress. You can't cope. You lose vitamins and minerals just by the way you react to things. Do you know that you lose a lot of vitamin and minerals walking around with a frown on your face? That you actually deplete your body of reserves? When you walk around like this all day, you feel like you mad at the world? Do you know a happy person, a person who smiles, a person who has joy, hold on to vitamins and minerals much longer than a person who's ungrateful, a person who's always negative, a person who's walking around with a frown and a scowl on their face, mad at the world? Do you know that a person who is happy and joyous hold on to vitamins and minerals much longer? And that's real. And that's real. Think about it. How many people do you think will walk around in the best of health being angry, mean, all the things, negative things that you know that, that, that cause destruction, bad energy, you know what I'm saying? How much, how much health is that bringing? Not much. Be joyous, be thankful, be grateful. Those things hold up much, much better, much better than being angry and mad all the time. Learn to let things go. Somebody hurt you, forgive them and move on. Don't hold on to it. You know how many people today suffering from diseases or ready to check out of here just because they ain't never let go of that anger that they had with someone because they did them wrong? Learn to let it go. Learn to let it go. Don't hold on to it. It's destructive. It's destructive. When you start focusing on joy, when you start being more happy, when, when you stay away from negative reactions like fear, life changes. Health comes. And there, not to say that you won't get tested, but it's the way you react to stuff. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you, let me tell you something that happened to me the other day. This happened Thursday. Something funny. I was at a concert. I, I like to go to concerts, you know, like the great, the good singing, singing concerts. So, so I'm at this concert, right? It was at the Del East. They had an after seven there. And they had Johnny Gill and they had Jaheen. So it wasn't a whole lot of loud banging music. It was good, joyous, peaceful, sensual music, but good music. So me and my queen, we sitting there. It was drizzling just a little bit, but not to take away my joy. So this two fe female couple came up. Their seats was right in front of us, right? This, this show you how, how keeping the peace and keeping joy, how, how a law works. So the one, the one female, she was really big, real strong looking, and, and it's about 6'2". <laughs> real true story. They sit down, they in chairs right in front of us. She sits down, right? She takes her umbrella, opens it up, the umbrella's about way big, right? Completely blocked our view. Never asked, could you see? You know, I, I know it's raining a little bit. Now we wore ponchos, you know what I mean? But it wasn't poor. She opened up this umbrella wide, completely took our view away, didn't have a care in the world. So, I, you know the first reaction how we get as people when we, not, we don't master our emotion? I said, I don't, I, I don't believe you. She just did this. Like, 
Like, wow, like, really? Like, I mean, like, you don't even care that we're, me and my queen are sitting here trying to enjoy the concert, and you just, wow, that's so inconsiderate. But I had to say to myself, you know what? This is a test. I said, so along I'm past this one. I'm not going to let these emotions take over. I'm going to sit here, and even though I can't see, I'm going to enjoy the music. So I'm sitting there, and I'm enjoying the music. And of course, my queen, she's getting a little edgy. You know, sometimes everybody don't take things the same way. So she's like, calm down. I said, guess what? This is a test. I said, we're going to stay in peace. <laughs> tell you, let me tell you how this works. Let me, show, let me show you how this joy works. We stayed in peace, right? About 20 minutes later, Allah be my witness, 20 minutes later, this couple came. A young, a young lady, young man. And the man was bigger than she was. He was huge. Walking with a cane. And his queen was real thin. Well, her partner had got up and moved in another seat in front of her because I guess she kind of felt like, you know, people get sense when they're being rude and inconsiderate. So she got up and moved and went down to another off. But this one stayed with that umbrella, blocking, didn't care. Well, by this point, the rain had kind of slowed up and really started going away. It's just like a little mist. But this real big guy went and sat right beside her. And as big as she was, he made her little. And he squished her so hard, she was like this. And I said, boy. Ain't a lot of comedian. Look at that. You was inconsiderate, so inconsiderate came to you. He could have sat his wife next to you who was thin, but he sat next to you and smashed you up and made you uncomfortable. Now you see how it feels. That's how a lot works. But that's only it only activates when you stay in peace. See, if you act on it, then you didn't, then you lost master of yourself. But when you stay in peace, remember, the battle is not yours. It's a love. And guess what? He didn't do no harm. He just told a lesson. Nobody was hurt. Nope. There wasn't no fighting. But a lesson was taught. You was inconsiderate, so inconsiderate came to you. Boom. Now I'm squished up. Now when the rain came back a little bit again, she didn't put her umbrella up. She knew. She knew. You see what I'm saying? So all I'm trying to tell you is keep your joy. Stay in peace. These emotions is what make you sick. These emotions is what take you down. Okay? Stay in joy. Stay in peace. Stay healthy. A healthy person is happy. A healthy person is joyous. A healthy person is thankful. Okay? You woke up in the morning, something didn't go right, you know what, boom, wait a minute, somebody ran into my car, oh my God, oh my God, oh, they ran into my car. But quickly turn it around, say, you know what, Lord, you woke me up, I'm thankful. I can breathe, I can see, I got a mouth to speak, I got feet to walk, I got hands, I'm thankful, God, I'm thankful. Because guess what? Some people don't have that. And the car is nothing but something material. So I'm thankful. Because you can give me another one. You gave me that one. You understand what I'm saying? We got to recondition our thinking. A lot of our sickness comes from how we handle stuff. You know, I'm mad with you from 10 years ago. What? That person had moved on. You still holding on to this anger and bitterness, and you wonder why oh, well, they tell me that I got pancreatic cancer. But you don't understand the emotion of that organ, okay? When the pancreas becomes imbalanced, it's because that you lost the love and sweetness in your life, and that's why the pancreas becomes imbalanced. And why you start gravitating towards sweet things. Because it's your way of coping. It's the reason why you ask going after these foods. Because you forgot how to cope with stuff. Learn to let stuff go. We can change our conditions 
if we start treating each other better, if we start communicating with each other better, if we start understanding to let things go and stop holding on to things, you don't understand why these things are occurring, but you're forgetting how you reacted to them. Come on, we, get, we can get better if we start changing the way we think, you know? If we really change the way we think and how we interact with each other and deal with each other, we can change our condition. Because we, 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 we really haven't been dealing with each other properly as a people. You wonder why black businesses suffer. Because we, we, we haven't been dealing with each other right as a people. You know, you go to a black business and, and y'all know I'm telling the truth. You go to a black business and they mess up something, you become the way, man, look, see, I, every time I try to give them some support, look, look what happened. Look, they messed up, look, they messed this up. I'm, 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 I ain't going there no more. But you go to the Asian and they mess up and you come back. You go to the Caucasian, they mess up and you come back. But you go to our people and you be like, eh, that's all right, I'm done with them. We got to stop that. We got to stop that. We got to start supporting each other again. Okay? We got to start working with each other again. We got to start thinking our, our way is to support our people first because we got so much of our dollars going out in the other areas of the community. We got to put the money back in our own community. We got to start supporting each other, loving each other more. All this is, believe me, all this is help. All this is help. We got to start working with each other, loving each other more, treating each other better, we will get well if we do these things. You know, when Dr. Wyatt transitioned, I was given a pocket Quran of his. It was in a little purple pouch. And I always believed that the first thing you see when you open something up, that's what's meant for you. Well, I opened up the Quran when I received it, and the first thing I saw when I opened it up, it said, Allah will change the condition of a people when the people decide to change the condition themselves. And so I say to you all, we can change our condition. We can come up out of sickness. We got to treat each other better. We got to use more common sense when it comes to our health. We got to eat foods that are good for us. We got to stay away from stuff that is killing us. We got to stay away from stuff that's causing digestive problems. We got to stay away from eating a whole bunch of sweets. We got to stay away from foods that are taking us down and dragging us down. And we will get well. We will get well. We will get well. Now, does anybody want to see a demonstration of the blueprint? Okay. Anybody in here dealing with, quote unquote, say high blood pressure? I've been told they had high blood pressure. Anybody? Okay. Can you come up? How you doing, sir? How you doing? What's your, what's your name? Manuel. Man All right, Manuel. Okay. So Manuel says that he has had issues dealing with high blood pressure. Okay. I have, have you been taking any, any medication? No. Okay. All right. Um, when, were, when were you first told that? About three years ago? Okay. Let me get this. Now, I'm going to ask you question. Now I'll explain why. Um, how much water do you have today? How much, how much water? Today? You've been doing a lot, you've been doing a lot of yearning today? Twice? Okay. Now you said that you had 64 ounces off so far today. Maybe a little more? All right. Now, the reason why I asked that question, right, is because he has a natural lean to his left side. And the natural lean to his left side is telling me they had some sodium issues, okay? So now, with kinesiology, if I wanted to test to see if he's dehydrated, then what I would do is I would take two fingers and go right at the tip of his nose. And the tip of his nose is the test point for dehydration. So can you hold the mic for me? Okay. So he's not dehydrated because that test point is strong. Mm -hmm. But 
but he's, he's got his lean to his left, the horn set, so to say. So his sodium is, is out of balance, okay? His sodium is out of balance, so salt. You, you, you consuming a lot of salt? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's got too much salt in his diet. Because I'm like, he's leaning there. You know, your body, your body is all information. And I'm saying, okay, he's got this lean there for a reason. Remember, when we in our right state, we upright, right? So if you lean in, some of us think, oh, well, you know, that's because I'm cool. No. <laughs> he's leaning there because his body is sending a signal, is sending information saying, listen, something is out of balance, okay? So the sodium's out of balance. So it's not because of a lack of water, because I just checked his dehydration point. So the dehydration point was fine, but he's got too much salt. So now, we talked about blood pressure. Let's see if the blood pressure problem is a result of the sodium problem, okay? Remember, no, no needles, okay? No x-ray, none of this, okay? So, hold this one. All right, so now, I'm going to check this point here, which is the pineal gland. So, okay, it's weak. So it lets me know, okay, pineal's out of balance, blood pressure's off. Usually it's an indication too with sleeping. How are you sleeping? You sleeping on it? See? Now, his body told me that. His body. I got three hours left. His body told me that. I knew it, okay, because it came up in balance. And what did I say also about blood pressure? If you don't get enough sleep, your blood pressure could be off, right? right. Okay? Now, we learned two things. He ain't getting enough sleep. He got sodium issues, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check his test. Okay, potassium. Okay, potassium's fine. No issue going on with potassium. That's good. Okay. I'm going to check his pituitary gland. Pituitary gland, strong, that's good. All right, let me check his thyroid. These are, these are areas that I'm checking to try to find out, hmm, could they be precursors to why you got blood pressure issues? So my thyroid, thyroid test is strong. Check the mineral that governs the thyroid, iodine, that test strong, okay, that's fine. Let's check his kidney. Right kidney, strong, okay. Check his left kidney, left kidney's weak. Any discomfort back here at all? No, no. But this, this, this one here, this one's weak. This one's weak. Let me check the stress test real quick. Weak. Okay. So now, something that I learned real quick. Okay. Right side, right side of your body is male. That's every human being. That's right. Left side of your body is female. Exactly. Check the stress point. And the male side stress point was fine. The female stress side was weak. Let's me know he got some female stress issues going on. He didn't tell me. I know it. Okay. Now, kidney is also the female kidney. All right. Now, with that kidney out of balance, right, that can make him retain a lot of fluid. Okay. He's not moving fluid like he should be, okay? So, now, blood pressure. If you're not moving fluids, and I, you heard me say this, it could cause a pressure problem. So, we need to fix that, okay? But now, let's see, when we go to these points again, does the blood pressure improve, which will validate whether or not they're causing a blood pressure issue. So here's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm going to have him touch certain points and then I'm gonna test his blood pressure and see if it gets better. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna touch, test the sodium. So take two fingers, put that right there in that area, okay? Now, I'm gonna go to this point and I'm gonna check it to see if it gets better. Pressure got better. So I have identified sodium as one of the culprits that's going to help improve 
the blood pressure, we got to get that excess sodium out. The next, the next thing I'm going to check so that we can validate is the stress point. Let me see if the stress point is causing pressure issues. Once again, blood pressure got stronger when we went to the stress point. So we know that the blood pressure, I mean, the blood pressure is affected by his stress. Okay? So now, how you dealing with female issues is also a precursor to your blood pressure problem. Okay? Now, we're going to check the kidney, see if when we go there, does that also improve? So now, blood pressure improves once again. Okay. So, so now we know. So now that we, so now we know, sodium. We gotta work on getting the excess sodium out of his body. We gotta strengthen the kidney so fluids move better, and we gotta learn how to deal with his female stress issues better to help improve his blood pressure. Now, do you think an allopathic doctor would have told you that? No. Allopathic doctor would have told you, you need to take this blood pressure medication and stay away from this and stay away from that, but you need to, you know, you need to do that. And then when you go back, you still got blood pressure problems. Because guess what? You haven't learned how to deal with your female relationships better. Okay? You haven't learned how to get more sleep. Right? You haven't learned how to move excess fluid and deal with too excess sodium. You see what I'm saying? So this is what we got to look at and throw the name high blood pressure out the door because that's chasing ghosts, okay? That's changing, chasing ghosts. And the thing about this, right, now he, he couldn't feel what I was doing, but I'm going to show him and let him feel it for himself. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, be, if he acts on it. You understand what I'm saying? If he acts on it. Yes. Yes. But I'm talking about the time you kept him and he out and then you kept him in bed. No, no. What, what made it improve is that I went to the areas of concern. This, help, this is called checks and balances. So when you go to those areas of concern and then check it against the blood pressure, it's going to validate if that's the precursor which causes the issue. See what I'm saying? If it's still tested weak, then it would let me know that that imbalance isn't affecting that. But all those points tested, when, when we went to all those points and the pressure got strong after each one, it let me know that all of those are precursors to why he had the issue with blood pressure. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what it was. It wasn't that it got better. It's just that we validated with those points to find out were they the issue that helped cause it. You see what I'm saying? So with him, Now what we do is we go we got something what we call establishing polar <coughs> establishing polarity. Okay? So we gotta establish its negative and its positive energy. So with this, we're gonna take this hand, right? Put that flat against your forehead. Now, as long as you can, I just need you to hold it in place. It's not a fight, okay? You're just holding it in place. I'm using one pinky, I mean one finger, excuse me. So I'm going to push down, and he's going to try to hold it in place. Now, this is his negative energy, so try to hold it in place, okay? All right, you feel the weakness? Okay, now, we're going to now take it and flip it this way, as strong as you can again, try to keep me from pushing down. This is his positive energy, as strong as you can, try to keep me from pushing down. Now, push. You feel the difference? You feel I'm still fine? Same pressure. Well, see how when I let go, his arm goes up a little bit? That's his positive versus his negative energy. Mm. So now, so that he can feel exactly what I did with the with the high assignment, strong as you can, hold it in place. You don't have, you don't have to use your hand, relax. Strong as you can, try to hold it in place, okay? Now I'm gonna go to that blood pressure point again. Strong as you can. Feel the weakness? Okay, now, as 
stress point, as strong as you can. Go to move. Go down. Now go to kick. As strong as you can. Ready? As strong as you can. Go to move. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now is now try to validate what were the precursors to the blood pressure. So I'm going to take two fingers, right? Now, go to that stress point. Strong as you can again. Try to keep me from pushing down. Strong as you can, okay? Strong as you can. You feel the difference? I'm pushing down. Boom. Okay, how it goes up? All right. So what we just validated once again on himself was that the stress is one of the precursors to why the fact that, that you have pressure issues. Wow. Okay? Now, as strong as you can again, we're going to go to that sodium one. Strong as you can. Strong as you can. Good. I'm pushing down hard. See how when I let go, it goes up? So now, that lets you know that the sodium is a precursor to your blood pressure issue too. See what I'm saying? So we validating this way, and he's getting to feel it himself. You feel the difference, right? All right? So once again, right, I'm going to go to that kidney again, strong as you can. Strong as you can. All right? Now that's, that's weak, okay? But now, what are we going to do? We're going to go to that kidney. Try to touch as strong as you can. Go in that kidney now, as strong as you can. As strong as you can. You feel the difference? Yeah, I'm pushing, I'm pushing down with my mic. Bang. That goes up. Pop. Alright? So I didn't take no blood tests. I didn't do no x-rays. And I can tell you, I know the reason why he has blood pressure issues. Okay? Stress, sodium. We gotta move the fluids from the kidney. Okay? Just like that. Just like that. Alright? Okay, ask, ask your question. Um, I had a question about uh, magnesium, magnesium phosphate mm -hmm. being my salt. Mm -hmm. How would that combat sodium? Well, here's, here's, here's the thing. Now, my, magnesium is known as the relaxer. That's the, that's the name for that mineral. So it will relax the heart. You see what I'm saying? Calcium also relaxes. Vitamin D deals with blood pressure, too. So we didn't check your D point, but it could be vitamin D deficient as well. So if you did a calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D supplement, that would help. But there's also a, a, a formula called combination potassium. It's by Nature Sunshine. And that formula helps pull out excess sodium and excess fluid out of the body, okay? But that's how we gotta look at things. We gotta figure out, okay, what's going on? So when, if he come in to see me, I'm going to tell him, you know what? Man, well, you need to get more sleep. You got to get more sleep, man. You know what I mean? Try to get eight hours of sleep. Three hours ain't getting it. You know what I'm saying? If I, listen, if I had three hours of sleep, I would be up here right now rocking. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm trying to teach y'all something, but I got to get myself together. I can't, I can't. I need more than three hours. Okay? Now, get more sleep. Deal with the female stressors. Deal with those situations a whole lot. I'm a, Deal with those situations a whole lot better, and we're going to get that excess fluid moving, you're going to be fine, man. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be fine, okay? So it's not, blood pressure is the name of the symptom, not the cause of the problem. All right, my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, you want to definitely stay away from that table saw, okay? But some of us, some of us can't take even sea salt or even like Himalaya salt. You know what I mean? I've, I've checked people for certain salts they can't, they can't take. You know what I mean? Everybody's different. You got to know your blueprint. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. I tell people, people say to me, well, isn't an orange healthy for you? It's high in vitamin C. I said, you know what? I said, here's what you got to understand. Nothing is exact across the board. Orange for person A gives them vitamin C, makes them healthy. Orange for vitamin C, uh, orange for person number B, uh, person B makes them sick because they got a citrus allergy. 
Because maybe they're pemphthenic acid deficient. Remember we talked about vitamin B5? If you're, if you're, if you're, if you're B5 deficient, you can't handle citrus. You can't even handle watermelon. Absolutely. That's, and, that's, and that's what I'm talking about. That's why if anybody tells you the blood type don't, pay, don't, um, don't make a difference, that's not true. First of all, what does the blood type describe? It describes where you come from, what, what region, what, what's your DNA? A plus, B, you know, B plus, you know, O. It lets you know. You know what I'm saying? And remember, we as a people have been so mixed up through all this, you know, going, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? So nobody's, you know, 100% anything. You know what I mean? You've got all kind of mixed stuff going on into, into you. So you need to know. It's important. Yes, ma'am. Latex allergy. Yes. Is that a deficiency with uh, B vitamins? Latex allergies is not a deficiency from B vitamins, but latex is just, just something that everybody can't take. My, my daughter can't take latex. When she has, has her children, they have in, in the hospital. This person has a latex allergy, get no latex around her. You know what I mean? We just, huh? Also, latex allergies, some of the foods are like, I don't, not to say they have latex in it, but you can't eat certain things. Like bananas, like watermelons. Right. And see, when, when, you, when you understand this form of kinesiology like I do, you can test food. I test food all the time. I'm in supermarkets like this. Okay. Look, sometimes your eyes want something, but your body said, mm. I go and like, mm, I could probably have that. Nope, 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 can't have it. But it's, a, it's all about being disciplined, too. Because I could go to it and be like, because I want it, and, well, if I just get, eat a little bit of it, because I want it. See what I'm saying? But then after I eat it, then my body's like, mm hmm, I told you not to eat this. Now, now, because when you, Think about it. You say, well, I can't eat that because it gives me gas. Well, guess what that's telling you? Your body telling you don't eat it. It's a reaction. Cause and effect. Okay? Don't eat it. Oh, you know something? I've been eating this. Then, you know, later on I've been feeling dizzy. That's your body saying don't eat it. You can't have everything. Yes. <laughs> because they don't care. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't care about you. Dr. White used to say to me, you know where the biggest drugstore is? The biggest drugstore is the supermarket. Well, guess what? They don't. It's about the money. You know what I'm saying? It's about that money. But guess what? We are a natural people. So unnatural things gonna affect us more. Okay? Because we're the natural people. Okay? Ain't no date for us. We've been around. They try to predate. You can't predate us. We've been here. All the time. All the time. Right. So, so my thing is, is that what don't affect one group will affect another group. You see what I'm saying? So we can't eat that seedless stuff. No. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, doing um, the, the combination of potassium. Combination it's a, potassium. Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a formula by Nature Sunshine pull out that excess sodium. Also, what else pulls out excess sodium too and, and um, moves excess fluid is horsetail. Horsetail is an herb that's for hair, nail, and skin and also moves fluids. It's good for structural stuff. Also, um, vitamin B6. B6 also helps move fluid. So B6, horsetail is high in B6, okay? So yeah, that'll, that'll help move fluids too. And also, learning to let go, now let's deal with emotional stuff, learning to let go of stuff. Learn, holding on to stuff will cause you to retain fluid, not let, letting go, and fear. Fear, fear will cause you to retain fluid. Let me tell you something. There's, there's, there's a scripture that talks about Elijah when he was fleeing from Jezebel. She wanted, she wanted to take his life, right? Now, for those who would understand the scripture, those who understand herbs, 
understood why he did what he did. But he was fleeing for his life, right? When he finally came to rest, and this is in the scripture, when he finally came to rest, he came to rest under a juniper tree. Now, fear is the emotions that weakens the kidneys. Fear finances weakens the kidneys. Okay? So here, this prophet was on the run for his life, but didn't stop running until he came to rest under a juniper tree. Now, what herbs is known to help strengthen the kidneys? Juniper berries. Hmm. So that's a frequency. That's a vibration. Okay. It's a juniper tree. Oh, which oh, Jupiter? Right. But but uh, but what I'm but what I'm but what I'm saying to you is that. These herbs, they have frequencies to help balance out our body, okay? Allah said, I put herbs here for the healing of the nation. He didn't put drugs, okay? Drugs are not natural to us, okay? We got to get off of drugs. Drugs are not healing us. Only thing that can heal us is the same things that come from the earth which, from which we came, okay? So, Drugs are not going to get it done. You got to use herbs. Okay? You got to use herbs. You got to, you got to drink good water. Okay? You got to have right thinking. Okay? Because remember, everything cause and effect. You don't have these problems just out of nowhere. It's the way that you dealt and reacted with things. But you can change. That's the thing. You can change. You can change. And you can fix it. <coughs> yes? Um, is there a technique to uh, prepare the juniper berries? Well, you can buy, you can, you can buy juniper berries in encapsulated form. Or you can drink juniper berry tea. But, um, you can just boil it with water? Mm -hmm. you, can, you, you, can, you can drink juniper berry tea. You can buy it encapsulated. Like, I do it encapsulated when I do juniper berries, when I, when I have to do them. But you also got to deal with the emotions. You see what I'm saying? Because if you're, if you're a person who deals with a lot of fear, you're going to have problems with your kidneys. Your kidney's going to weaken because of the fear. Fear finances will weaken the kidney. Because Allah commands you not to be afraid. Trust in him. Is that going to affect the bladder also? Yeah, it will affect the bladder. Absolutely. Because think about it. When people get real fearful or you watch movies and stuff and the person <laughs> nervous, it be on itself. Right. Exactly. Yes. Uh, you were talking about replenishing the life force and shit. Mm -hmm. uh, repeat that when you were saying how we do that. How we okay, so so when when what I'm saying is, is that okay, every time a man eject ejaculates, right? He's shooting out his life force. Because everything in that is to create life, right? Is you. So you constantly shooting out life force, right? and you ain't putting back to replenish what you're shooting out, your body gets weak. Prostate swells up. You know what I'm saying? You be coming back, 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 start bothering you. Cause you're shooting out all these reserves. Kidneys get weak. Cause you're not fixing it. So what do you need to do? Zinc strengthens the prostate. Okay? Bladder, women, women who have issues with their bladder. Vitamin A and D combination strengthens the bladder. Okay? A and D combination strengthens the bladder. That's how we got to think. You know what I'm saying? We got to think like this. You got, you got hormonal problems? Talking about females. Dung quai. Dung quai. Dung quai is an herb. <laughs> Helps balance out the female hormones. Dung, D-O-N-G, dung, quai, K, um, excuse me, Q-A-U-I, dung quai, I think, yeah. But uh, but dung quai balances out your your um, hormonal imbalances. It's a great female herb. I tell women all the time, you suffer from endometriosis and fibroids. Leave the meat alone. Leave it. 
Stop eating meat. When you're dealing with fibroids, and, listen, you, you got, we gotta be smart, okay? So every October, they have Breast Cancer Awareness Month, right? Okay. Now they tell women all this stuff, get your mammograms, get this done, get that done, you know, be conscious of, 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 of breast cancer. But they never tell the women, stop eating the eggs with all the estrogen, stop eating the chicken. They ain't gonna tell you that, why? Because it affects industries. But they're not telling you the truth. You gotta leave those things alone. Okay? Now, cheese. Cheese is a big problem with lumps in the breast, fibroid tumors. Cheese, guess what? Because it's mucus. It's cow snot. See, I'm gonna tell you what it is. You're eating it right. So this is, this, and fibroids is nothing but your body's way, it's like a trash bag. It's gathering all these toxins and it's from sacks. Excuse me, that's the cheese from that spaghetti yesterday. <laughs> so, when I'm, so when I'm, and Queen, I love you. I'm grateful, but, but I had to throw that out there, right? Because I, I don't, I'm not negative. So, so, so what I'm saying to you is that you have to think like that. This is how you got to think to correct the problem. Clients to come see me. When they cycle on, if they still can't leave the meat alone yet, I said, well, don't eat meat during your cycle. It'll go along a lot. Go a lot smoother if you don't eat the meat. And guess what? Do a herb called cramp bark. Cramp bark will help you get over those cramps. All right? And do some calcium. Calcium will help relieve it. Do you know the number one cause of divorce is calcium deficiency? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because guess what? Calcium calms you down. Okay? And if you got a calcium deficient woman, and a woman needs more calcium than a man. She needs seven times more calcium than a man. But if you got a calcium deficient woman and a calcium deficient man, them two people who fighting all the time and don't even know why. They just come in the house, look at each other and start fighting. I don't like you, I don't even know the reason. I'm going to bed. Don't even realize they deficient in calcium. And when they got calcium in their body, they just as cool. You know what, baby, I'm so, I, I'm so sorry that I was acting like that. I don't know what came over me. And it's that calcium. Deficient in calcium. Yeah. Yes, let me tell you something. You gotta understand what's going on. February, I'm gonna tell you this real quick. I'll be right with you. February, I'm gonna tell you this real quick, right? So they call February heart month, Valentine's Day. Heart month, heart month, heart month. Okay, do you know what they know that you don't know? See, you start, going down a downward spiral from November. Why? Well, what happens is daylight hours are shorter. You get less sun. Calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D comes from the sun. So you're getting less of it. Now you're going November, December, January. By the time February come around, guess what? Your heart is like, mm. I ain't got no calcium, I ain't got no magnesium, I ain't got no vitamin D. I'm out of whack. So guess what? Along comes the commercial. Oh, not only is it Valentine's month, but it's heart month. Get your heart checked. How many people are going to get told they got some heart problems? And their heart is out of balance because it's lacking calcium, magnesium, and vitamin D. As soon as it gets that, it's back. It's beating right again. Okay? Back to October when I was talking about with Women Breast Cancer Month. Guess what happens? What starts to occur in the month of October? The white blood cell count starts to decrease. You gotta recognize people, okay? You people from the sun. So the, the planet and the, and the atmosphere and the changes in the seasons all affect you, okay? All affect you. I heard Todd say it one time, he said, you want to know what's going on? Study the woman. Come on. Okay? It affects you. So, so understand that they know your white blood cell count going to drop in the month of October. So now they do a blood test and say, hmm, your white blood cell count is low. Hmm, you might want to run some more tests. We want to make sure that, you know, you don't have cancer or, you know, some kind of, you know, it could be HIV or 
you know, because it's white blood color. It's not hot. And it's going to drop because of the region of the world that we're in and the time of the year. We got to think smart. We got to stop getting duped up. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. Okay, and once they get in your head, do you know I had a doctor at the University of Penn? And I'm so glad Dr. White told me about the power of words because at that time I was awake. And I'm healthy, I'm feeling bad. This is when I was going through the situation with the liver. So then she wanted to go do all these other tests. And I'm like, you know, I don't feel like I need that. I'm, I feel good. I could, I could see it. My skin was good. I was feeling strong. You know when you feel well and when you're sick, okay? I'm like, oh, I feel good. So she said to me, she said, you know what? You might want to get these tests done now that we planted the seed in your head. I said, what? <laughs> now, now that you planted the seed in my head. I said, oh, my God. I said, I said, I said, Dr. Wyatt said, beware the power of words. I said, oh, oh, okay, okay, thank you. I didn't get those tests done. Guess what? Two weeks later, they called me up and said, you know what? Um, you know, your 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 the liver test part. Uh we 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 did the tests and um well whatever happened, your body fought it off. Um, you know, it it looks fine. And I'm driving down the down the road and I got and I'm talking through my car. I'm not holding no phone up to my head, so I'm putting that disclaimer out there. Okay? I had, I had the Bluetooth speaker, okay? Not on my ear. Don't do that either, because that's electrical. But I'm talking, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm sitting there laughing like, you ain't telling me nothing. I don't know. I know how I feel. You know what I'm saying? But when they see that they can't get you, then they come back with the truth. Now, I, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I understand. So, so I'm just trying to make y'all aware. Okay, and let's see what's up. Oh, all right, so we're getting ready to close, but anybody who want to see me in the back, you know what I mean? Um, I could do a little mini consultation, you know, that's fine. Um, I, I do allergy tests, like I said, and, and, and Sonoma, I told you, I do it with words. And why? Because words have power, and I understand them. So, you know, if you want to come see me, that's fine. I'm sorry, you had a question. Oh, vitamin P? Yeah, well, well, bioflavonoids. You're talking about you, as far as, um, which that's what vitamin P is. Bi vitamin P is bioflavonoid. So if you buy like a plant-based bioflavonoid supplement, yeah, that's how you get it naturally. Okay? Yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, we gotta, we gotta be more mindful of our diet, eat right, you know what I mean? Throw these names of diseases out of, out of, the, out of the window. Listen, my cousin that I was telling you about, that's the, he's the one that I was talking about with the diabetes situation. He, he, he don't deal with that no more because, because, Tom, come here for a minute, please. This is my cousin. I love my cousin. Yo, we used to go to all the games. Look, me and this guy, yo, you remember the move that Dr. J did in, in 1980 when he went around the Lakers and went around the other side? We was there! We was there! So, yo, this is my cousin. So, cuz, tell him. What, what did you do to help with that? Uh, took some of that Nature Sunshine uh, uh, supplement that you uh, showed me on. The P Target. Target had P14. Zinc in it. Yeah, the P Target P14. Levels will start dropping in like two, three days. In the zinc, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. That's what's in it. Okay. All right. You hear that? Yeah. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm telling you. Now, had, before he came into this knowledge, right, he was told he got diabetes. You know what he's saying now? Oh, I just need to take some zinc. I just need to take some target P14. Yeah, stay, pip, away pip, pip. That, stay away from that metformin. <laughs> stay your bladder up. The metformin. He said, stay away from the drugs. Okay? But you understand what I'm saying? I just I just wanted y'all to hear that. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm, I'm going to end it. But, you know, I'm so thankful and grateful to all y'all for coming out. You know what I mean? I just, I, I'm so blessed to be able to even tell you guys the truth. You know what I mean? I, it's a blessing. It's an honor. I'm thankful and I'm grateful. You know what I'm saying? I, I have no motive behind my teaching. I love my people. I teach my people truth. Okay? So I'm looking forward to coming back and getting, yes? What should um, when per people do that have breast cancer? What should they start taking? Well, we got to start figuring out, okay, what's going on in their diet? Okay? The one thing about when we're talking about spreading, how it can spread, you're talking about 
lymphatic system and bloodstream. People don't really die from cancer. They die from the, the, um, the problems. They die from the radiation and the chemo. They die from pneumonia. They die from kidney failure, heart disease. I, well, we pulled it down, but, but the, yeah. But this is what they die from, OK? Because we're chasing goals. You know what I'm saying? What's the root cause? How can I help a person overcome something like that if they're holding on to anger? Which anger triggers. You see what I'm saying? Liver is the store of all emotions. So if I'm walking around angry and mad and bitter, and I develop liver cancer, how can I help that person turn a challenge around if they still hold it on to anger, bitter? You gotta let that go first. You, you tell me a person who got colon cancer and I will tell you that's a person who don't let go of nothing, okay? They hold on to everything. And guess what, right here in the forehead, I can see if a person has real, real digestive issues, because right here is an is a area or that lets me know if a person got digestive problems. You ever see people with real deep groove lines in their head? That's a person who hold on to stuff, don't let go of stuff. And that's real rap. You gotta understand the body. Exactly. Constipation, holding on. Not letting stuff go. Because what does when you defecate, what are you doing? You release it. Okay, so if you don't if you don't let stuff go, guess what happens? You become constipated. Because you don't let nothing go. You hold on. You bitter. You angry. Then you wonder why you strain. Uh, uh, I can't go. I can't go. Yeah, because you mad. Let it go. Let it go. Go to the bathroom with joy. Don't the baby do that? You learn from children. I'm telling you, pay attention to the child. Once an adult, twice a child. Pay attention to the child. The child just goes to the bathroom. He don't care. She don't care. Ha, ha, ha. You looking like, oh, look at me, the poopy. Yeah, what they holding on to? They ain't got nothing to hold on to. And guess what? You need to stop holding on to stuff. Let stuff go. Somebody did you wrong so well, let a lot deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Just like I told you at the concert, if I had reacted because they pulled that umbrella up in front of me and I couldn't see and got mad and let that anger take over, I probably would have missed the show. Probably would have got kicked out of something. But I let joy in my heart, said, no, it's going to be all right. And guess what? They got the experience and consideration the same way I did. And it was funny to me. Stay in peace. All right. All right, y'all. Um, before we close out, any, is this, anybody recognize this thing? Somebody left a phone back there on the phone. The vending machine. Uh, all right. Um, before we close out, we got we got one more acknowledgement. Um, you know, sister, she came in. She came in a couple minutes late. She tried to sneak in and sit off over there in the corner by yourself. That's yours. So I want to say happy solar return to sister Sandra. She's sitting over there in the corner, y'all, over there with them two plants. So happy solar return. This is love. We gonna have, so when we when we honor the young king, we're gonna have some cake and ice cream for you too in the corner. So we we you know, we'll uh we'll shut down and have a party. Listen, y'all, I um I'm I'm happy to have both them in here. And 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 the, I'm gonna tell you what's crazy. I had known the boo for a few years. I met Dave through a childhood friend. Um probably back in like last July or August, I met Dave. And I was talking to Dave about the hernia situation that I had going on, and I said, well, I'm gonna go see the brother Naboo about some therapy, and he like, for a hernia, and I'm like, yeah. So he said, you think he'll see me? So I'm like, yeah, I'll see, why not? I wanna find out these two cats grew up together, yo. I mean, from little boys. They grew up together, went to school together, a couple blocks away from each other the whole nine. That just shows really like how small this thing is. You know what I'm saying, on the grand scheme of things. You know what I'm saying? So I'm grateful that Dave came in, I'm grateful that Naboo came in, I'm grateful that Shona came in. I hope, um, I hope y'all can see, like, in addition to the study, how, how vitally important your health is. Because if you got these blockages, if you got these aches and pains and these things that's keeping you from really letting the blood flow and letting your brain flow and just letting your life flow, then studying is gonna be futile. You ain't gonna be able to retain nothing. And, and, and just like Dave said, 
I, listen, I'm a witness to letting go of that anger. You know what I'm saying? I had a whole lot of it built up in me. I still got some. I was, I was raised spaz out yesterday. The boy didn't tell you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but, and, and, but I stayed calm. I didn't, I mean, so free to tell you, I stayed calm. I didn't flip out. Even though I was ready to, to take some heads, I did. You know what I'm saying? So, listen, we got, we got these people amongst us in the community. You know what I'm saying? I mean, Dave's sitting back there. He got boxes of herbs back there. You know what I'm saying? The booster sitting back there showing them with the table. They got cards. They got numbers. Get in touch with them. You know what I'm saying? Because your vitality is important. Your health is important. And your life is important. And, and me and the boo, we grew up together. Same neighborhood. I said, so what was in that water? <laughs> you know, went to the same school. You know, and just, just to reconnect like that and, you know, as brothers, it's like, it's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. So, yeah, listen. Call your brothers up. Call your sister up. You know, if you got any aches and pains. If anybody who laid back there on that table, I guess they can tell you a little bit. And, um... Like I said, I'm, I, I can testify to all three of them. So um, trust that y'all took some good information out of here. Trust that y'all going sooner or later get these brothers and sisters a call. And uh, the next class here will be July 22nd. Um, like I said, we're going to honor the young king and we're going to honor Sister Sandra since she snuck in here and sat in the corner. Didn't want to say nothing. Happy solar return. And uh, as always, peace, love, Islam. I love y'all.